Okay, 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 and I think we are live. Hello all newcomers and welcome back my fellow Eternians. As always, it's me, Emperor AP, and today we are going to be talking about um, micronations and the internet. I know uh, for myself, uh, running the Empire of Eternia. The internet has been a huge part of who we are and what we do for a long time. Uh, being able to connect with you all, being able to grow our citizenship and everything through the internet and all because of the internet. Um, I now want to discuss what the internet means for micronations, what percentage of micronations kind of, you know, are on the internet, whether that's as, uh, as you know, the main way, essentially, of growing their nation, whether that's YouTube channels, whatever, uh, and essentially what the benefits and, and potential detriments of um, different aspects of using the internet for your micronation are. I also want to look at our community. One of the best ways to learn about micronations, to understand any sort of social uh, movement or, or social group, is to look at the events that are taking place in it. And so uh, for us learning about micronations through the development of those nations in our discord and our youtube channel and the comments uh even on our website where we update our micronational map all of that can tell us a ton about uh micronations in the internet so i want to go through and discuss a lot of that with you all tonight uh Dalman says hello it's good to see you uh gorse says hello crafton says hello it's good to see everybody and i hope you are doing well uh you can see right now i'm just on the front page of my uh, uh, YouTube channel uh, of the Empire of Attorneys YouTube channel. Um, I'm actually going to go to YouTube Studio real quick just to make sure that I have the uh, the proper stuff set up for our live stream. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, again, make sure to like the video. It means a lot. Uh, it helps with our growth. Uh, oh, I want to hit content here. Uh, by the way, I do have to do a big shout out uh, for us passing 3,500 watch time hours. I'm about to get to that in just one second. Yeah, okay, we have everything set up right. Uh, I need to put some tags in there, but I'll do that later on. We have surpassed 3,500 watch time hours. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we are on our way to 4,000, actively pushing for that. So if you get your grandma in here, get, get your friends in here, uh, get your teachers, get everybody, get everybody in here, uh, get your boss in here, uh, get, get everybody to come hang out with us and, and uh, explain to people what the micronational community is. Um, that's been a big part of this channel this whole time is, you know, educating people and uh, learning ourselves a bit more about the community. And so having you guys actively participate in this uh, is a huge thing. A, a lot of this stream and what I really want it to be is for us to uh, get into what you guys are doing and to uh, kind of have this open discussion about uh, what all of this means. I hope to make this kind of a reoccurring series. So the more you guys participate, the more we can do with it. Uh, Gorse says the rest of the Alliance can't join us because it's 1 a.m. British time unfortunately i understand that's one of the things about being uh in the americas uh that we we have an issue with is we have a number of uh pretty big groups of people who follow us in other countries and a lot of time the the time doesn't work out so we miss a lot of people uh but for all of you who will be catching up after the stream i appreciate it and if you want to interact with this and continue to grow for the next one let me know and say hey i'm in this time zone can you try and plan streams around this and I'll see what we can do. Uh, we can figure something out. But uh, in saying hello, at, hello to everybody, um, one of the big things that I want to talk about was our uh, Discord. Ooh, also Manu says 1.6k subs. Yeah, we're about to hit uh, 1.62. I am really hype about it. We're, we're getting close to that too. Uh, but a lot of what our micronational community has become and, and has developed through is more or less our Discord. Um, our Discord has been something that has given us a lot of ability to uh, see what other people out there are doing. You know, we've always been able to follow things like uh, the micronational subreddits and, you know, the, um, the micro wiki pages and things like that. But there's very few other places. Uh, Twitter, actually, being another good place, and that's one that I want to talk about here in a little while uh but first i want to jump over to our discord if i can get my computer to change to it real quick there we go our discord hey uh one thing i want to show off 
uh, people post cool art like this. Uh, so this is just Onyx. Uh, he's one of our Discord members. Uh, he might actually be in the chat with us right now. If you are, hello, Onyx. Good to see you. Uh, Manu says hi. Lazik says hello. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, Malbec says hello. And Aiden. Um, uh, Aiden says he sent a comment on the previous stream in case you forgot. I appreciate it. Thank you. I do need to go back and update the, uh, uh, the applications and everything. So thank you. Um, uh, Manu says hi. Uh, Ucharian Empire says hi. Uh, hello, guys. So I want to talk about uh, art like this. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, art from Onyx. We also have uh, different things that we can see, you know, updates from different micronations. Uh, of course, we always have uh, people talking about different land that they want to purchase, different things that they're, oh, goodness, different things that they're trying to get into. People post memes like this, uh, which I certainly appreciate. I think there's... Uh, just about always stuff in our in our discord that is is popping off at one point or another um i think it's been huge for people telling me it's a benefit for when they want to uh learn about micronations as well and kind of uh talk to other micronationalists this is something that i feel like is kind of unprecedented in the community um or at least since i've been in it so i appreciate how much we've been able to bring together how much we've been able to do even things like this king carminate uh actively posting like a happy new year's to everybody our discord it's a social media but it has become like our own little sphere of social media and it's beautiful to see uh as a micro nationalist i don't i don't think there are too many actively back and forth communities like that uh, real quick, if you'll excuse me, guys, I am going to step over here for a second. Goodness, sorry about that, guys. I had something caught in my throat, and it was absolutely killing me. I could feel myself getting bothered, and I wanted to wanted to get rid of that. So, um, yeah, that's that's one of the big things for us is is being able to see how this Discord has grown. Uh, for us, has allowed us to see, in, in small part, things like uh, what governments are arising, how people are interacting, what things. Uh, feel more or less successful as the community develops. You can see, you know, if you go back through literally just the logs on our Discord, you can see the progress and like the month timestamps and stuff for when nations are doing different things, which is really cool. I've always wanted to do a uh, a web series, a news series of some sort, being like, hey, this is just what everybody's up to in our micronational community. This is how we've been growing. This is how we've been developing. But it feels like for a lot of, uh, excuse me, it feels like for a lot of our Discord, it becomes kind of seasonal. Uh, so it's still not to the point where I would do like a really regularly updating show on it. But I have seen that there are a lot of updates that are coming up, especially uh, in the last few months. You know, as our Discord has grown to like over 200 people, that's when we started to see more and more interaction. Because, you know, there will be, there's a higher percentage that people are on at the same time you are. Right now we have like 54 people on. So one of those people posts something to ask a question and to talk, and then everybody kind of starts cascading and, you know, bouncing off each other. And that creates new posts and new comments and new things um, that all get people kind of flexing their micronations and discussing their ideas. So uh, I really like that aspect of our community. I feel like uh, I want to make it a bigger part of these streams where I can kind of show off to you guys like, hey, here's cool people doing cool stuff. And I know we have like seven or eight people. Hey, we have eight people in the stream right now. So I think that's a big thing for me. I, I want to make this a more active part of the community. And I feel like that's what you guys come here for. Um, a lot of it is certainly to learn, a lot of it certainly for us to discuss these ideas, but on top of that, you want to see what else is happening in the community. You want to have a deeper way to connect with everybody. So uh, I want to shout you guys out. I want to show support uh, for everybody who has been helping us out uh, and making this Discord what it is. Uh, we, we have people who are f for real like participating in this, and this is amazing. I have loved to see it. Um, 
again, there are some things that are just kind of unrelated that people post in here. Uh, some of it, again, kind of crazy stuff. But people do uh, post, like, funny memes and interesting stuff. Um, so I, I definitely recommend you guys check it out. <laughs> the people, and it's a lot of, like, political stuff, too. I feel like the, the thing that's interesting about it uh, is everybody has, like their own their own aspect to it their own direction and stuff and we all end up uh being able to vibe kind of as the micronational community uh we're all coming at this from a unique perspective we're all trying to uh create something that's our own little slice of whatever but at the end of the day we can all like laugh about kind of the same things we can all say uh hey this uh, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, this is the way I'm trying to go. And these are all the different like ways I've messed up. These are all the different things that I've run into that uh, I can see where these people are uh, doing things wrong. Or I can see uh, how this, this thing that I've been trying to do for like uh, so many months or whatever, somebody else could do like that if only I would have realized that uh, there are like 10 steps that I didn't need. Um, <laughs> uh, Manu says... I have to wash all these dishes, so I'll just uh, do it while watching the stream. Hey, it means a lot. Thank you. Uh, Aiden says, you are what you eat. People who eat fast food, fast, uh, speedy, absolutely. Uh, they don't even stop in the drive-thru. They just they just run. They, they don't even need a car. They can just dive in, grab it. Uh, Demoen says, uh, you are what you eat. You are what you eat, and you are what you watch, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because uh, if you want to be cool like this YouTube channel, you got to subscribe. Um, the Oh, gosh. Uh, Demoen says, me who eats urinal cakes. Oh, God. Well, let's not, <laughs> let's not have that. Uh, let's, let's just think about setting them down. A little too intense. Let me... Oh, gosh. I need to have a chat pulled up is my thing. We have a screen that has a chat on it. But maybe it's not added to this one. Let me throw the chat up. Everybody wants the chat. Uh, maybe I'll just set up a live screen. Hey, there we go. Okay. We got chat in. Let's see if chat comes in. We will try it out. Um, so yeah, I, I just really wanted to show off our Discord. Again, there's a lot of stuff that you can see going further and further back about different things that different countries are doing. Um, you know, people have shown off a lot of cool stuff. Um, look, people, for example, Manu making uh, outfits and clothing and things like that. Uh, we have the Republic of Eltonia showing off like Christmas. That, that's another thing too. Uh, our story is showing off uh, Christmas. When we have, hey, uh, and Manu. When we have cool holidays and stuff that happen, when we have uh, special times of the year for people, that's when people show off a lot of their stuff. Um, and that's that's what I was kind of talking about with it being seasonal. Like a lot of the time people, whether you're working, whether you're in school, uh, a lot of people get, oh my God, super zoomed in me. Super, ah, this is, gosh, this is my face every time I hear Micronational War. This is, this is me. It, it gets me. Uh, this is my face every time trying to uh, trying to dodge these comments from from fascists and stuff there ooh ooh a few times in the community I felt it but uh i I love how much we've been able to develop with uh with people during the holidays with uh kind of that seasonal trend where you'll have uh, you know, people getting off work, getting off school for these holidays, uh, will able to post a whole bunch, able to show and like catch up for maybe weeks or months that they've been unable to post or unable to do something. And now they're saying, hey, I'm back online and I have like all this stuff to show you and all this stuff to tell. Uh, so we'll get these huge bursts of content uh, in the uh, in the discord. And it's really cool to see because you will. Uh, not see something for like a week or two maybe and then all of a sudden you'll come back in and it's like shh, you you can't even find the place that you were at it's just gone uh and it's it's really nice to see that i this was like my first attempt at having a 
a Discord server myself, and uh, I still have a lot to learn. Uh, people like David, you know, one of our newest citizens, people have been telling me for a long time that I need to have uh, a better way to manage, like, roles and stuff. That's one of the big things that people talk to me about is, like, uh, you should create, like, more structure to it and more set up for the roles, more, uh, uh, more, like, organization for the different, like, rooms, different channels and stuff. Uh, but honestly, I have been just flying by the seat of my pants. So I'm glad that it's survived and maintained as best as it has thus far. Uh, and I'm excited to get better and better about it. It's been something that every time I've invested a little bit more in it, it pays off a ton for our community. It makes everybody feel a lot better. So uh, I'm excited to continue forward with it. Make sure you guys show off in here too, because I want to, like I said, I want to start kind of showing off more and more what people are doing. Um, I, I might jump in real quick to a couple of those Christmassy things. Let's see. Okay, first off, we had uh, Onyx saying that he was making uh, some sort of Five Nights at Freddy's mod thing. Interesting. Uh, I have, again, always wanted to be into to video games and trying to make more stuff uh, like that for Eternia. Um, I've actually been messing with a little bit of programming stuff here and there, but um, not as much as I'd like to, so props to you. Uh, Aristoria, uh, I like the Christmas tree. It feels very, like, traditional. It feels very, like, you know, classic. I, I respect it. Um, uh, excuse me, that's Eltonia. Uh, Eltonia, very classic tree. Uh, the blue and the white, I appreciate it. Um, Aristoria going for a more, like, fancy tree, I see. Uh, that, that's very cool. I respect that. Uh, and I think it's, it's almost like the, uh, Gosh, am I remembering this right? Like the Home Alone tree? Like I feel like I feel like it looks like that. Okay, let me see. Lights on. Yeah, this is this is like a very fancy. Okay, Manu's showing off here. I appreciate it. They got the tall tree. They got the like big bulbs on it. This one's fancy. This is the they they put a lot into this tree. You could tell there's like different. There's like older family ornaments. There's like newer stuff. There's like you know, when your kid like makes you a little thing on there, is there's the variety pack. You could you could tell there's like family history in this tree. I, I appreciate this one. The other ones had like a very specific kind of arrangement. You know, they, they look like uh a tree that was kinda set up maybe outside like a store. So this one I, I appreciate it. It's it's unique. There's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then yeah, showing off uh Manu's stuff in the tree. Showing off Micronation stuff. Very cool. Okay. And then let me jump back into the comments. See what everybody's talking about. Okay, cool. Our chat did show up. I'm glad. Uh, Aiden says... Ch -ch -ch. Ooh, uh, Chepulins, uh says, Hello, it's me, Africano. Uh, it's good to see you, Africano. How are you? Uh, Manu says, I make... Uh, what? I'm curious as to what you're talking about, Manu. Uh, Gorth says, Micronation meme review should be a thing. Uh, yes, we straight up had that. Uh, I, I asked you guys in the Discord, what was it, like two days ago? Uh, whether we should do that next stream. And I, I have not had many inputs. I liked this one. And then I think that's when I said, like, do you guys want that, that meme review? Do you guys want that? That meme tournament, let's get it. And then kind of nobody did it. Like, I, I didn't have anybody send me any memes. If you guys have the memes, send me the memes. I'm ready for it. But we will be here until then. Until the meme stream starts rolling in, we will be here. Uh, and I'm going to probably jump on Twitter and start Twitter beef. So if y'all want to hang out, and we'll, we'll start Twitter beef together. It'll be good. Uh, Manu says, uh, Aiden says, Africano, yeah. Uh, Jose says, my micronation is called New Kingdom. Hey, very cool. Uh, it's good to see Jose representing New Kingdom. Uh, Aiden says, micronation meme review, you know it, micronation meme review, if people would send me them. I see them every once in a while. I'll go back and catch up in the, uh, in the memes part of our Discord server. Uh, and every once in a while, I'll, I'll catch up and I'll get a few that are funny, but... Uh, I have not done a big meme review yet. That, uh, I'll do it. I'll jump in. I'll jump in in a minute. 
Uh, I need to go get tissues. Excuse me, guys. Aiden says, Vistern uh, is well here. Uh, good to see you, Aiden. And good to see Vistern doing well. Uh, Manu says, FNF Friday. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Aiden says, I will try to win uh, one without cheats. Uh, good luck. Uh, good luck trying to beat it. Uh, I have heard it's hard. Uh, Gore says, I didn't realize. Uh, yeah, yeah, I tried to send everybody out like a, hey, we should do the meme review. So yeah, y'all hit it up. Post it in the memes. I'll, I'll start going over some memes. Uh, Kyber said, uh, free speech exists. China, I'm going to need to speak with the manager. My, my whole thing, my whole thing, I want to see, my nose is great. Guys, I, I got to go get tissues, excuse me. But, um... The, the things that I wanted to test out on the stream, I wanted to do a meme review, but we didn't have a whole bunch of like specifically Micronation memes. A lot of these are just like political or just random whatever memes. So I kind of want to see, I kind of want to see people's like Micronation specific memes. Uh, but oh, I, I feel like I'm going to get so played on that too, because I'm not going to know anything about the Micronations. I'm going to goof. Uh... Hi, it's due. It looks like you missed your Kalidian lesson. Ballistic missile threat. I, I did see this one. I thought that one was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, we we straight up need to have uh, some, some like, Micronation specific ones. I also want to push the bounds on YouTube. Last time we tried to do stuff on YouTube, we tried to watch a Vice article, uh, a Vice video, and YouTube straight up, like, cut us off of the stream. Like, they started, like, shutting down the stream. They started, like making it uh giving us like difficulty and error and stuff it was so bad uh so instead of that uh we should see if there are any channels any youtube videos that uh youtube will actually let us watch because i want to discuss some stuff there's like hot topics that are important for us to discuss uh today is the anniversary of like the january 6th insurrection attempt i want to talk about that i want to discuss like problems with that and how that's been going uh, and again, to talk about uh, Twitter Twitter beef with Micronations. But uh, in doing all that, I uh, still need uh, to not get like actively shut down by YouTube. So what I'm going to do real quick to test this out, I'm going to see... What do you guys see? You guys are still on Discord. Cool. So I'm going to pull up a YouTube video real quick. Uh, we're going to discuss this. And then... That's what I think I'm going to do. Um, so Channel 5, if you guys don't know about Channel 5, it's the, uh, it's the, oh, I'm trying to think of the, the other name of this show. Uh, it's Andrew Callahan. Uh, it's like a comedian who goes around and like uh, interviews people and does like news interviews uh that are comedic during like uh important events uh in the nation uh the thing that he did uh most recently if you guys haven't seen uh the q shaman guy he was one of the guys during the uh the insurrection he uh interviewed him from jail uh, that guy's like in jail and i haven't watched the video yet but i kind of want to watch it uh and see what the take is here uh, and how crazy this is about to get so I wanted to jump into that but I don't know if YouTube is gonna absolutely meme me I know they're probably gonna demonetize it you know and not not allow me to uh, to get any money from it but honestly that's fine I, I'm not that worried about this for particular for this particular video uh, but let me see if I can get it to pull up yeah yep there we go Here's here's that guy, uh, crazy Q shaman guys. This is the guy in the big headdress that you see on the, you know, like any, any uh, images of like the Capitol insurrection and stuff. This is this fucking crazy guy. Uh, so I I kind of want to watch that, give some political takes on it, uh, you know, kind of discuss the issues with this and how how that terrific event happened. Uh, but uh, and, and it's kind of what led up to it. But before all that and watching this guy get made fun of on the internet for a bit, uh, let me go grab the things that I need to, to literally survive. Uh, blow my nose. Real quick, I want to see if it'll work, though. Let me stop the ad. 
Let me make sure you guys can hear this. And then I'll come back. Machining or 3D printing. This is a free call from Jacob Chansley. An incarcerated individual at Alexandria Detention Center. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. <laughs> Glad to see you guys. You guys are fucking patriots. Look at this guy. He's got covered in blood. God bless you. I got shot in the face. I got shot in the face with some kind of plastic bullet. It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. I'm not one to usually take pictures of myself, but in this case, I think I'm making an exception. Jacob Chansley, the self-proclaimed QAnon shaman, has just been sentenced to 41 months in prison for his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. He was seen entering the Senate chamber with a spear. To accept this free call, press one. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hey, man, how's it going? All right, cool. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, brother. I'm doing okay. You know, I uh, spent, uh, spent the last 20-something hours in a cell, so, you know, but at least I had something to work on. Right. So for those who don't know, where are you at right now? Oh, wow. Hey, sorry about that. I realized I just turned up the the settings. Uh, I know you guys can't hear me. I just read the chat. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, uh, I have no idea whether this guy is going to be like crazy and hype or whatever, or if he's going to be really chill. Uh, like, I, I'm curious as to what this guy's take is. You already know that like he's this, uh, this crazy QAnon conspiracy theory, like right wing guy. Does he, does he come on like remorseful and chill? Does he come on like, yeah, like we were right about that. It, he can't say like he didn't do it or whatever. I, I don't think there's been a trial yet. So I don't know if like any of this could be used in that or if he's going to say anything that may be incriminating. Uh, let me know if you guys know if he's already had a trial, if there's already been uh, all that stuff already. But this guy is straight up in prison. Uh, we're about to see how this goes. I appreciate uh, that Andrew has his his kicks, his his fresh Nikes, uh, posted up in the background just to kind of flex on us a little bit. Uh, you can see he has the American red, white, and blue tie, uh, very nice. Uh, official Channel Five Action News uh, hoodie on. Uh, clearly a professional setup. Beautiful candle to give us some mood lighting as well. I wanted to show that off to you guys. Uh, he he's a man who knows how to how to paint a scene. He knows how to how to fill a space, and uh, he's on this on this dreary, rainy afternoon here. He's kind of giving us uh, the inside scoop, if you will. Well, I am in Alexandria Detention Center in Alexandria, Virginia. 
I am sleeping on a one and a half inch foam mat that is on top of a concrete slab every night. And that's pretty much where I'm sitting all day as well. Um, I get 22 hours in my cell and two hours outside of my cell. Uh, there's no going outside or working out or anything like that. You know, this place can definitely take its toll on you. You know, it makes me think of the saying in, uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption when Red said, uh, in prison, a man will do most anything to keep his mind occupied. Yeah, I know how that is. Right. How would you describe the conditions of the jail that you're in right now? Well, the conditions in Alexandria are in the detention center not as bad as they were in, say, the D.C. jail. I've never experienced, like, real racism and prejudice in my life until I went to the D.C. jail. There was a, a, a black woman from Nigeria that was, like, their nurse or their doctor that was examining me while I was fasting for 11 days because they weren't feeding me organic. She thought I was a racist and a white supremacist and all this crap because she believed what was on the mainstream Mockingbird media. And um, when I told her that I was not racist, that I was not white supremacist whatsoever, that I've actually, you know, dated all sorts of women of all sorts of races, I've, I've had all sorts of friends of all sorts of races, and I said, I, I even, you know, I've even dated several black women. She said, I can't believe a black woman would ever date you. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> His take. What? Oh, my God. First off, Lazic, uh, Manu, sorry about the <laughs> no mic thing. Manu says, no, I think he kind of became more chill after the thing happened. Also, I heard that he regretted it. Are you actually getting real in? Oh, what is attorney of national sport? Uh, yes, uh, Jose, that's a great question. If you check out our website, uh, you can see our land purchase uh, funding uh, goal there. Uh, we actually have a progress bar that fills up on our website as we get more funding. All of the funding toward the Empire of Attorney, or whether you buy something on our Etsy, our Patreon, whatever, all goes toward our land purchase funding. We don't keep any profit from that. All of it's going straight toward trying to purchase land for us. We're actively looking for that land, so thank you for your help. Uh, with this, this was a, th a crazy take. My man, my man, it seemed like from really no starting question, just started going off, just started going off about the prison. Uh, he must have been sitting in solitary or something for a good minute. Uh, maybe not even solitary, just sitting in a, in a prison cell thinking about his actions, I guess. Man, that he was he was not happy. Uh, also, he went. Uh, the I like the the. Um, the black lady saying, I don't see why a black lady would ever date you. Oh, God. I was like, oh, my God. You know, like, this woman is, like, being openly racist, you know, because if the roles were reversed and she were standing in the doorway while a white nurse told a black guy, I can't believe a white woman would ever date you, she would be appalled. You know, she doesn't know what my ethnic background is. She doesn't know I got Native American blood in me. She doesn't know, you know you know what I'm saying? She has no idea, but she's judging me by the color of my skin. There was also a guy, a guard over there that wore a Black Lives Matter mask. So he was taunting the Trump supporters and, you know, like, harassing them and, you know, messing with them and stuff. I didn't I didn't know you had a Native American in you. Yeah, yeah, that's something. Uh, that's something that I found out um, somewhat recently, actually, when uh, I talked to my grandmother and uh, my father, who I didn't. Before or after you wore the Native American headdress, though, or is it, or is it a Viking thing, though? Ooh, now I'm confused because I feel like it's a. Ooh, am I am I goofing? Am I getting it wrong? These these are the questions. Um. Ooh, uh, Marina, uh, Jose says, uh, was attorney is national sport? Uh, as of right now, we don't have a national sport, but I want to create uh, a game for the Empire of Attorney, like a completely unique game for us. Uh, and so I will give you updates as that develops. Uh, Jose says, and what will attorney's transportation be like, the school education system? All great questions, all things we will talk about in the future. Uh, we have no means of uh, creating a transportation or education system as of right now. Uh, so we're doing, uh, we're planning for our short term uh, rather than that far ahead. But these are all great questions uh, and theory that we can talk about in the future. Manu says, these guys seem like they were mostly trying to feel good about themselves uh, as if they were the main protagonists of a movie and not really contributing significantly to their society. Uh, agreed. It, it seems like it was a lot of people who were riled up about, uh, uh, about, their views and their opinions of the way that uh, the government was going, the society was going, um, a lot of which it seems like were based on uh, 
things that weren't true. Like, whether it's conspiracy theories, whether it was just, you know, being le fed information, incorrect information from, like, really heavily biased media sources, um, you know, things that are specifically trying to promote propaganda. Um, there are plenty of reasons to be upset with the United States. There are plenty of reasons to be unhappy uh, with living and, and your, your individual personal situation in the United States. But their reasons weren't, you know, economic inequality. They weren't, you know, uh, civil rights. It was racism. It was, you know, based around feeling like America isn't what what it used to be, which uh, the whole other topic, whole other issues there. But this seems to be based specifically, like you said, Manu, around that kind of main character syndrome, about feeling like, yeah, well, this was, um, this was what we needed to do to get things back to the way that we wanted it to be, uh, even though, you know, some of these people, there were sure some older people there, but the majority of people were like 30s, 40s, 50s, like people who use like Snapchat and TikTok and like all those people people who came and showed up to that insurrection there were also a whole bunch of like boomers there too but still is a it's surprising it's surprising how effective uh you know uh propaganda and you know uh just misinformation can spread on the internet and that's why talking about micronations on the internet is such as an important thing because um i don't know of any case where a micronation's ever done anything crazy like this or had any beliefs that are as radical as this. I've seen some pretty crazy micronations out there. Uh, but I would say that, you know, being political groups and political organizations, this is a political organization. This is a group of people, a loosely connected group of people, too. It wasn't one, you know, identifiable group, a whole bunch of people. But that mindset and that specific political views uh viewpoint kind of led to this like spiral and this intensity that kind of focused in in around this and there was a lot of hype there were like people as we're figuring out more and more that were a part of the government who like participated in uh, at very least allowing that to be done easier you know laxing uh security details you know uh making uh the the situation just ripe for that to happen, uh, what happened on January 6th. And so uh, what's, what's important to me is to figure out, as micronations, how we can still engage truly and honestly with the political spectrum, as micronations are going to be a part of every single aspect of the political spectrum, whether we like it or not, but not having any micronations get to that fanatical that crazy a point um, micronation should be a place of open and free expression they should be places where we can develop our ideas and push forward with the ones that are most successful for the most amount of people but we shouldn't we shouldn't at the same time build an environment that allows for or encourages uh, extremism and that's a whole nother debate, but a whole nother topic. As for today, I think looking at stuff like this and examining why it happened and you know what micronations on the internet are about right now can help us to understand what the next 10, 15, 20 years are going to look like as micronations start expanding in their, in their growth and in their abilities. Really, ever I never met my actual father, except for like once when I was 30. Um, but my grandmother uh, on that side, she told me that we have uh, we have Cheyenne blood in us. For sure. Have you been able to make any friends in there? Oh no, dude. I, no offense to anybody in here, but you know, jail is not the place to make friends. <laughs> yeah. I just figure like you might want to play card games or like you know spitball and figure out some way to pass the time. Oh, dude, I can't get it. No, no, no. That's the thing. I can't. I can't play card games with anybody because I'm in the cell 22 hours a day, and then when I come out of my cell, I'm the only one out of my cell. So you got sentenced to 41 months. How do you feel about that sentence? People with ADHD. People with ADHD feel bad about that sentence. You 
you know, when I come out of my cell, I'm the only one out of my cell. So you got sentenced to 41 months. How do you feel about that sentence? Um, you know, I, I don't think it's fair. <laughs> That's what you mean. <laughs> They th I think that they thought an example had to be made, and I don't think they anticipated that example being a double-edged sword, where, uh, you know, they, they tried to make an example out of me, but in the process they made it clear to the American people that the justice system is not fair or balanced. Hmm. What do you mean by that? That, you know, there was a guy that threatened to shoot Pelosi in the head, and he had he brought two guns and a bunch of ammo, and he got 28 months. I never threatened to hurt anybody. I never vandalized any property. I never hurt anybody. I didn't assault anybody. I didn't steal anything. You know, WTF, mate. <laughs> right. So why do you think they picked you to make an example out of? Um, because uh, I think that I became a symbol, not just so much of January 6th, but because I became a symbol for freedom, a face for freedom of sorts. And, uh, you know. Hmm. Oh, no. I think for other people, hold up. I, I want to I wanna give my take on this. For other people, they, it, it's all about the burden of evidence, right? That person who threatened whatever they threatened the way they did, first off, how much money does that person have to pay a lawyer to get them out of that situation? Also, how much evidence is there of uh, their actions going through the entire day? You're one of the most photographed people, filmed people in the entire thing. If a whole bunch of people are filming you as one of the main figures of this thing, whether you are or not, Going and standing on top of the, you know, the speaker, the house's desk and stuff like that. Going and just putting yourself really hard in front of it. I don't know, man. I feel like you can't, you can't do that and then feel like, well, now I get, you know, I, I, I was the face of this. I was this whole thing. But then now I don't get charged as, like, the face of it. That I don't get, you know, the brunt of that. You have the most evidence against you, it seems, out of most people who are doing things that day. Uh, they're, they're trying to get everybody, you know. But you're a really easy target because you have just a lot of, like, really purposeful. You were, you were really proud of that stuff when you were doing it. So, I don't know. It, it seems hard to not put you, like... Uh, Whatever their their maximum sentencing, barring from like people who were like attempting murder and stuff on people, uh, you know, if they're giving you like high sentences for being there, then hey, you're you're one of the top, man. You were just really there. Like people took a lot of pictures of you being there, staying there the entire time. Um. Uh, Jose says, are the Imperial notes value uh, only in one, one's unos, or are they going to have different numbers of them? Um, so I think we're primarily going with ones for right now. Uh, one, because it's easy to print. You know, most people aren't buying them in hundreds. Uh, we now had somebody who bought 200 notes, and that was exhausting to print. So I would like to print bigger denominations, but at the same time, <clears throat> it costs us uh, a certain amount to... Uh, to put the notes, uh, our, our currency online. Uh, and so, you know, each denomination, we would have to have a different, uh, a different, um, you know, post for it, a different um, uh, item that we're, we're displaying, which costs us a certain amount with Etsy. Um, I, I want to do it. I feel like it's not worth it right now. We're about to be doing a lot with our financial system that I want to talk about soon. And once we are able to do that, once we're able to get our money transmitters license and kind of start things up, we are going to have uh, the ability to kind of revamp our system. <coughs> My life. My life. Hold on.
Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, multiple things. Uh, I have been coughing a little bit. Uh, I went and got tested uh, today. I don't believe I have COVID, but uh, I will keep you guys updated. Uh, I think I just have like a sinus infection. But um, so uh, Jose, we can we can talk about that in the future as well. Uh, Daniel says, hello, uh, how are you? It's good to see you, Daniel. Uh, I'm doing good. Um, Manu says, also Trump as commander-in-chief, awful performance. Letting these people in and then posting tweets saying he loved them like someone uh, would say to their own children. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that's one of the things that we're figuring out. I was watching uh, what, Stephen Colbert uh, on, I think it's late night, uh, showing... Uh, you know that they're now finding out stuff about like Sean Hannity and stuff and Sean Hannity having talked to Trump and Trump having you know in some way Sean Hannity was given information about what was going to happen the Fox News host uh, and he was messaging people in Trump's like cabinet being like hey I'm worried about what's going to happen on January 6th I'm worried about what's going to happen in the next 48 hours you know le leading up to it he was like worriedly messaging people about the plan so he knew about it ahead of time and i think that's what we're figuring out more and more is that there were people in you know kind of the upper rungs of republican leadership who had some advanced warning at the very least to cough so i'm not blowing everybody's eardrums out but i said my soul um, uh, Ryan said, hello, hello, Ryan, it's good to see you. Uh, Ryan said, that photo smells political. Uh, it, it is, we're, we're watching the, uh, the, um, Channel 5 Andrew Callahan interview with the, uh, the QAnon shaman guy. Um, ooh, multiple things. Uh, Manu says... Uh, ooh, Jose says, micronations be created if people get away from America, rules, law, racism, everything that's bad with America. I see why people want to create micronations. I appreciate it, Jose. Uh, yeah, there's uh, difficulty kind of all around, and I think micronations are a great way for people to express themselves and to continue to develop their interests in that. Uh, but as well, it's an avenue that allows us to do things if we choose to legally and um in a way that is respectful of uh, everybody's rights and everybody's ambitions. So uh, we're, we're proving a, a route, a, a meaningful route and a positive route uh, to making social change. Um, Manu says, uh, they are not revolutionary heroes. Uh, these people who should be heard and helped, uh, not that they were right, but something must be wrong if an event like that happened. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Uh, Manu saying uh, these are people who should be heard and helped. Yes, uh, I think people that that's why I kind of brought that up earlier that a lot of these people's claims for why they did these things are like <clears throat> they're racially motivated. They're conspiracy theory motivated. They're motivated by being like anti-vaxxers and stuff like that. Um, feeling like, you know, things aren't the way that I want them, so I'm going to, you know, cause all these problems and try and just immediately uh, attack people over it. Um, that is, uh, and it ultimately led up because Trump didn't, uh, didn't win the election. And so they just going to steal back the election. Uh, and it was all those different people who, who had that motivation and felt like they were, they were going to overturn everything. Um, it's, it's brutally sad because those people claiming all of those reasons for you know their upset the reason that everything's so bad for them don't take into account the actual reason that their lives are, are in such shambles that they're struggling so much sure some of these people probably have mental illness some of these people as well who may have mental illness or may at least just be very uh uh easily influenced do not have the ability to seek out uh, their own therapy, one, potentially because of stigma, that's culture in the United States around that, but as well because they don't have, like, the Medicare to, to be able to do that. They don't have the, <clears throat> the medical coverage in order to pay for a therapist and to have that regularly provided and available for them. Uh, and that sucks. It's something that is really difficult to watch, where 
you see people struggling and you see people hurting and you see people feeling so angry about it, but they're angry at completely the wrong thing. And no matter how much you try and convince them, like, hey, there, there's something more that you need to be focused on. There's a bigger, there are bigger fish to fry that they're focused on all the little uh, insignificant, oh, they're going to be racist and they're going to be, you know, hateful towards specific groups that they feel like are the, the, uh, the target of their, their issues when they couldn't be further from the truth. Um, so yeah, good luck to those people, I guess. Those people in particular, it seems like a lot of them are going to jail, but, um, for everybody else, I, I hope that it's something that we can kind of change people's minds on, uh, slowly but surely. I also think that's why micronationalism is so cool is because it gives people an opportunity where they wouldn't have had before to actually, uh, feel like they're able to express themselves uh, and to get their political views out there and as well to have to work actively in a political system and one that's changing and one that has to take care of other people's interests maybe that are very different than their own so you realize what's actually reasonable to develop and what's not and you realize the reason that different things happen and you know uh, what things can uh, benefit or detract from a society as you create one so you know uh, it's it, people who are actively participating in micronationalism, I think, have less likely a reason to participate in things like, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and stuff, just simply because there are less, uh, it, it's less relevant to what they have to do every day. Uh, it's not that you can't, you know, but it, it is something that's a distraction from actually developing the, the short term goals that you have. Uh, and so I would like to see how that develops in the future, but I certainly hope that we can keep that, and that we can provide a place for people to come and learn about politics and to test their mettle and to really understand, you know, these things work and these things are helpful. And these things actually change people's lives on a one-on-one -on -one scale. I can see the people that I've affected with the things that I've done rather than just, you know, being kind of off to the side and having your own little political sphere that you, you work in because you have some media source that tells you kind of how you should believe. And then you just go out into the world, assuming that the world is what that little tiny bubble sort of reflection chamber has told you, uh, instead of, you know, actually going out and participating in society and helping people learning about people. Uh, but That'll be in the case. Let's watch this crazy guy. Let's keep watching this crazy guy. Uh, ooh, uh, Ryan, Ryan threw up some comments too. Uh, photo smells political and, uh, ooh, Jose says, uh, we need micronations for a reason because of how America is. Uh, I agree. And a lot of other countries as well. There are a lot of messed up countries in the world. Uh, and I think there's just a lot of change that needs to happen as a, as a society, as, you know, as human beings in the 21st century. Uh, but that all being the case, if you want to support us, please subscribe, please hit all notifications because there's only like, I think 30 or 40% of you guys that actually have the notifications turned on. So it'd help us a lot uh, as well. Hang out. Uh, let's, let's watch this crazy guy. Uh, Galena says Trump is honestly the worst, one of the worst politicians ever. I know I'm not a Republican. I'm a, a, a sock dem, but what he's doing, uh, I hope all parties can see is hot garbage. Uh, agreed. Uh, it, it's it's very bad. It, it's just a thing where he's he's a an attention seeker. He just wants to have the attention on him. Everybody knows this, and then he uh, he just kind of dumps the problems onto everybody else and goes, oh, if there's an issue with something, it's somebody else's fault. Uh, but the next thing that I want to do is flying in the face of what everybody's screaming is the only way to fix things. Anyway. Continuing on, uh, Ryan says, uh, what makes a good politician, though? Um, ah, ooh, so, yeah, see, then we're going to get into that argument. Uh, there's a whole restructuring of things that needs to happen. There's a whole change in this system because I think there are inherent... If you believe that there are inherent flaws in the system that we're in, then you have to think uh, that it's hard to be a politician because any politician, by that definition, is going to be flawed. But... Um, Maki says, at Galena, uh, how many wars did Trump start? Uh, oh gosh, Ugh, this is a whole thing. Uh, Galena says, uh, non-corruption, being a good candidate, working for a greater good, not throwing a hizzy fit if you lose, yeah. Daniel says, Janu January 6th was a political dumpster fire. Agreed, Daniel, this is a whole issue. Galena says, I don't know the exact number. Uh, Ryan says, being... Real corrupt can advance one's career, though. Agreed. Uh, it's actually, like, a whole part of being a politician. 
Uh, Naki says zero. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, let's continue. No, I, I stood out the most, to say the least. May look like yeah, no parents. I energized a lot of people. Why do you wear those tan world fucking stand up for their skin well. color ass pants? How do you feel about the nickname QAnon Shaman? Well, it's not it's not anything I ever asked for. It's one that was given to me by Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones gave you that nickname? He's the one that called me the QAnon Shaman for the very first time when I did an interview with him. I think he was on that game of uh, January. Damn. So it just caught on from there. Yeah. Maybe you're not queuing on shaman, but you are a shaman, right? And you also... I do, pract I do practice shamanism, yes, sir. Can you tell me more about what shamanism means to you? The shaman is like a ancient monk or um, priest, psychologist, pharmacologist, historian, storyteller, artist, um, astronomer, tattoo artist, um, psychic, all of these things wrapped into one person. And so for me, I was always interested and intrigued by Native American culture. And like I told you, my grandmother said that I have Cheyenne in, uh, in my uh, blood. And she actually said that one of our ancestors is one of the few survivors on the Trail of Tears. Um, so I, I always knew that the medicine man or the shaman knew something special. And I always wanted to know what that was for myself. See, I think what's interesting about this is that you can tell there's like a there's like a lead up right like there's you can see that there's a progression from like just normal person maybe even somebody who has like a little bit of you know a, a wildness to them a, a little bit of a a you know uh, uh you know more extreme beliefs or whatever but i think that like what he's talking about here you can clearly tell is like a passion of his like he's like you know i really like the like shamanism stuff i really like helping people and doing all these things and like teaching and you know uh being this creative artistic person and it's like wow that's really cool how'd you go from there to QAnon, storm in the capital all this there there's a departure there's something that curves off from there and I don't know if he gets to it in this interview, but I feel like you've got to kind of suss out what, what's that, what's that curve there? What's that thing that kind of reverted you? Because that's, I think, part of the micronational community as well, man. If we can talk to people and if we can get people understanding their own political interests, what's actually beneficial to them and their, their society and get them to work on that then maybe they will continue to be these creative, wonderful, unique people instead of slowly getting more and more frustrated to the point that you're just going to veer off in some crazy direction because you think it's the only way to get some sort of political change in your life is to go hard extremist. Uh, and I, I think there's there's something to be said there. Um Galena, uh, sorry, Mackey says, at Galena, how many countries with bad relations uh, with the U.S. did Trump make relations? Um, all, Ryan says, uh, Trump made European allied countries annoyed. Agreed, which is one of our, our largest uh, areas of allies. But anyway. And so something very deep in me called me to the shamanic path. And so I searched for the truth of my existence and of enlightenment on the shamanic path. And I always knew I was destined to find that. it one day. Right. When did you first get introduced to shamanic practice? So I officially started and deliberately started my shamanic path on November 2nd, 2012, when I got my first tattoos. And those were on my feet. And uh, now I have over a hundred hours worth of tattoos, and uh, all of them were earned, or uh, like like through personal growth, or some sort of a, like a symbol for an accomplishment, or all have some sort of a deep meaning, or were used for like um, to like symbolize the overcoming of pain or an obstacle in my life. Like for example, the the bricks on my arm, the sleeves, I got those after my dad committed suicide. It took like 36 hours to complete. And the whole time I was, you know, using the physical pain to uh, deal with the mental and emotional pain I was in. 
Yeah, the top of the feet, the foot is supposed to be like one of the most painful places to get tattooed because of all the uh, nerve endings. Yeah, there. that's why I chose it. Was because the whole idea with you know shamanism is you go you go through ordeals, and after you go through the ordeal, you like uh, you know you have this like out of body experience. You know whether it be by overcoming pain or you know going through some sort of like long or, ordeal process. You know like like some people you know know about the uh, sun dance ceremony and stuff like that. That's an ordeal. And a lot of these things end up causing out-of-body experiences or spiritual experiences of reality. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, you know, psychologically and emotionally, what prompted you to get those first tattoos on your well, feet? Well, I wanted to know, uh, like, I always ask myself, why would, why are these tribal people all over the world, why are they, I'm back. why are they tattooing themselves? Why are they undergoing hours and hours and hours of excruciating... Hold up, hold up. I gotta, I gotta go back and hear some of this. I missed everything. I'm sorry about that. All right. Uh, I'm trying to make myself some dinner. Uh, Ryan said, by doing things like derailing the multilateral uh, Iran nuclear agreements, agreed. Uh, Mackey says, I stayed with bad relations. Um, Jose, uh, in my micronations, uh, the laws are simple. If uh, create a crime, no matter if it's big or small, you go to jail for a year, year do it again, you spend another year, third time, you'd be banned from the kingdom. Interesting. Um, do you think because of micronationalism, like, why not just ban people to begin with rather than trying to put them in jail ever? Because I feel like if you ever put anybody in jail, like also that that's an interesting concept because if I like steal a candy bar, right, because I'm like starving to death, I go to jail for a year. But I could just say like, no, I, I'm not. And then, you know, would you just kick me out at that point or like? I, I don't know if I murder somebody and then I go to jail for a year and then I get out and then I murder someone again and then you go to jail for another year and then I murder someone again and then you just kick me out like after I killed like three people then you just kick me out or if I stole three candy bars then you kick me out and both of those people get kicked out I don't know that seems that seems like a very interesting uh, rule of law uh, you get, you could get away with a lot of crazy stuff. You could just go on a spree and you'd be like, I, you just kill like 800 people. And then you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to jail for a year. I'll see you guys next year. 2023. Look out. Uh, you know, that'd be horrible. Uh, you'd have a whole bunch of like January 1st attacks happening all the time in your country. Cause we would just be like, Hey, I got a year and then I'll see you again. Uh, Ryan says Trump didn't improve relations with the empire's enemies. Uh, Mackey says looks like Trump, but he's better, uh, is better than people that made terrorists get a thirty-five million dollar nation to get five trillion dollars, and other than this, nothing. What? I don't, I don't understand, Mackey. Uh, Gorth says I'm going to have to go now because it's two a.m. here. Ooh, good luck, Gorth. Uh, it was good to see you. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, Ryan says five trillion debt. Yeah, I'm also confused, Mackey. Mikey says, Ryan, North Korea, Turkey, Russia, and Iran. Uh, Jose said, I actually like the imperial ones better. Uh, it makes the value unique and different. Uh, I agree. Thank you. Uh, it means a lot. Also, uh, let us know if you want to purchase some. We just did our first international shipment actually to the UK today. We dropped it off. I was super hype about it. Uh, I want to actually do some stuff on it. But let me go back and get my stuff, and then I'm going to play this again. Ah, oh, gosh. I wanna, I wanna hear more about what this guy's saying. Oh shit! The overcoming of pain, or I always knew I was destined to find it one day. Ooh, okay. I'll be right back.
I am back once again. I have made Pad Thai, and I am ready to continue our adventure into the Q Shaman Prison interview. Gosh golly. Uh, okay, let's jump into it. Right. When did you first get introduced to shamanic practice? So I officially started and deliberately started my shamanic path on November 2nd, 2012, when I got my first tattoos, and those were on my feet. And uh, now I have over 100 hours worth of tattoos, and uh, all of them were earned or uh, like, like through personal growth or some sort of a, like a symbol for an accomplishment, or all have some sort of a deep meaning or were used for like a... Um, to like symbolize the overcoming of pain or an obstacle in my life. Like for example, the, the bricks on my arm, the sleeves, I got those after my dad committed suicide. It took like 36 hours to complete. And the whole time I was you know, using the physical pain to uh, deal with the mental and emotional pain I was in. Yeah, the top of the feet, the foot is supposed to be like one of the most painful places to get tattooed because of all the uh, nerve endings. Yeah, right? that's why I chose it. Was because the whole idea with you know shamanism is you go you go through ordeals, and after you go through the ordeal, you like uh, you know you have this like out of body experience. You know whether it be by overcoming pain or you know going through some sort of like long or ordeal process. You know like like some people you know know about the uh, sun dance ceremony and stuff like that. That's an ordeal. And a lot of these things end up causing out-of-body experiences or spiritual experiences of reality. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, you know, psychologically and emotionally, what prompted you to get those first tattoos on your well, feet? Well, I wanted to know, like, I always ask myself, why would, why are these tribal people all over the world, why are they, why are they tattooing themselves? Why are they undergoing hours and hours and hours of excruciating pain? What's the point? Like, why? So, at what age did you kind of become interested in Native American culture? Oh, I've always been interested. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Arizona, so I've always been interested in it. It's always been a part of my life, you know. But was there a particular moment, like maybe in your youth, where you were like, oh, this is something that I think is super cool and like I want to learn more about? Kind of. I just, like, whenever I saw the, the native dudes with the, with the big head, feather headdresses, you know, um, when I heard about peyote and hallucinogens. Have you ever experimented with peyote or anything like that before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. All shamans use these tools as um, as a way of transcending the physical body and gaining a larger view of reality. My man, my man said, I was really interested in taking a lot of drugs. My man said, I, I wanted to take peyote and hang out what oh no this man seeking spiritual enlightenment oh goodness buddy and so uh, the shaman is like an expert of these spiritual or these mental tools that gain they allow people to gain a broader view of the world of their spiritual connection to all things and um, of the nature of god and life itself when did you first experiment with the medicine? Um, that was, I think, in like 2014, 2015, something like that. That was the first time I ever tried peyote. But I had tried other, you know, uh, you know, things like sacred mushrooms and, you know, things like that beforehand. What insights do you feel like you gained from peyote? Well, I can honestly tell you. I'll put it this way. The only way that I can really explain the things that I understand or the, the insights that I've gained, it wasn't just through peyote. It was through things like cannabis, through mushroom experiences. Why is it all drugs, though, my guy? Like, I get it. Like, it's, the drug experience is going to make you, uh, like, crazy stuff happen or whatever. You know, especially these hallucinogens that he's taking. He's like, yeah, it, that's when all my like really intense experiences have happened or whatever but i feel like basing your entire world philosophy on like all of your synapses in your brain firing really hard at once you know that may be uh, a, a unique and interesting perspective to view your life from and to view your understanding of reality from but i don't think that's what you should base your entire view of reality or experience on because it is a very intense 
perspective to view it from. Uh, you know, a lot of the time, your insights, like your personal growth and stuff, can come from really intense experiences. Sure, if you have a really negative experience or if you have something like this that's maybe, you know, what a lot of people call like religious experience and things like that, where they have really, really intense passion of experiences. Uh, some people have from like drugs. Other people have it from just like praying and like doing things in their religion that, that have shown to have like similar dopamine effects and stuff like that or you know people falling in love a similar similar kind of intense perspective shift emotional shift um, all of these may be slightly different in you know what their interpretation for your own life is and all that but man these you know I have also I've had experiences like that where you know um, having like really intense uh, experiences with, um, you know, your own like personal life and your love life and your, you know, your outlook on the world when something really crazy happens to you. But then at the same time, there have been plenty of other times where kind of in the calm of everything, just in, you know, in just another day or whatever, kind of sitting back and in a, a moment of real quietness and real stillness, just realizing like, oh, I, you know, I feel good about myself. I, I feel lucky to be here. I, I appreciate just the fact that like I'm living right now. The fact that I can see things. I can, you know, have some feeling of free will. That I can, you know, uh, exist and interact with the the rest of other things that exist. I, I think that's really cool. Sometimes, you know, uh, life just gets you like that. But uh, I, I don't necessarily think that you should base your entire worldview off of like the magic mushrooms that you do or the peyote that you do. Not saying that those can't be life changing experiences, but that that shouldn't be something that's taking you on like, you know, your own personal tour to guide other people. Uh, Maki says iron sharpens iron fitness. You have a whole new world to explore. It will be a journey. What? Uh, ooh, a whole bunch of people are talking. Uh, Ryan says tattoos can look cool. Probably why people do that. Uh, fair. Uh, hold up. Uh, iron sharpness, iron fitness says Malasia. Hey, what's up? Uh, then he says, I have a question. Can you trade with other micro nations like coastlines? Um, can you explain what you mean? Uh, cause I'm I'm kind of curious. Uh, so a lot of the time, micro nations trade and and develop through the internet um you know you can ship things but if you want to ship things you'll generally ship them you know via standard shipping uh things like the, the usps or uh you know fedex or whatever uh you'd have to ship them somehow um if you're close enough you can hand deliver things you know you could drive something to somewhere if it's close enough or fly it if you have a pilot's license let's say but most people just do it through general you know contacting someone and shipping it through normal means um that's one thing as well a lot of micro nations will create like their own stamps and stuff and while that's cool uh the normal means of uh transport and distribution for uh micro nations and uh all of that is not uh uh you know will not accept that so you have to go about you know using normal stamps that are acceptable to to most couriers um ooh uh iron says i want to make a micro nation called gabzilla uh very cool i recommend that you look into what micro nations are and that you determine if you're trying to make something that is uh realist or fantasy uh if you're trying to make something that's realist i suggest you uh you know if you're trying to legitimately start a country i suggest that you join another micro nation instead of starting one for a number of reasons uh but we have plenty of videos on that uh jose says the new kingdom national sport is three by three basketball and martial arts very cool uh let me go ahead and jump back into this through um uh all sorts of other uh like you know um transcendental experiences including things like meditation and trance states breathing rhythms um even things like fasting um tattoos all of that stuff and the ultimate uh conclusion I came to is that the body is a tool for the soul of God, almost like the body is like a microscope and a telescope, and the soul of God is the observer, able to examine the infinitely large or the infinitely large. 
See, that's what I'm talking about. Right? This is what I think is so unique about humans. I say as if I'm not a human. This is what I think is so interesting about uh, especially people who like uh, have what they feel like are religious experiences from psychedelics. Our brains, because and I'm not a doctor, you know, so don't don't credit me with too much here in my explanation, but um our brains are wired uh, uniquely to ourselves because of our developments, because of the way that neural pathways uh, grow and interact and change based on their experience, you know, how much you use them and how much they're developed and the ways that they're developed. Uh, they grow based on specific patterns that your brain develops as you develop, uh, gaining knowledge, experiences, so on and so forth. So your brain is coded in its you own unique way to give you experiences of happiness or sadness, you know, intensity, all these different things. There are like parallels between people, you know, uh, there are certain chemicals, certain things that we can tell are like the same about people's thoughts and the way that they show up. But uh, people's like specific neural pathways are created uniquely. And that being the case, it seems obvious that like, if you, if you have like a really intense drug experience, what that is is all of those like neural pathways firing off really intensely. Maybe not literally all of them, but a lot, a lot of them in a lot of different areas. And so if uh, you're experiencing something like that, you're probably experiencing this thing that to you feels like it makes so much sense and feels like it, it explains everything you've ever wanted to know because it's just all these synapses firing at the same time. It's just all of this stuff happening and like overlaying weird, you know, uh, expressions of your own mind and what's happening over top of each other in a way that feels like it's perfectly uh, resonant to who you are because it's a you know, this kind of reflection, but to everyone else is nonsense because it is. It's just these this firing of all these neurons in your brain. So when you try to explain stuff, that's why it always comes out stupid. Uh, anytime you hear somebody who's trying to explain what they understood from like their drug experience, it's it's always something like, oh, and then it, it allowed me to manifest my own understanding of conscious being of reality. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? It, it's something that you feel like is really resonant and important to you because it's this firing of all your neurons, even if it's something that makes absolutely no logical sense. But that uh, it ties to your emotions. So it's good luck to this guy. But man, it makes people look like that all the time. My man Andrew is given everybody's face when we heard uh, it, it opens the God soul to your uh, microscope. Oh no. Infinitely small. And so in a way the body is like an instrument that can be tuned in a number of different ways uh, to, to tune the mind and the body to the frequencies of God's omnipresent consciousness. You know, every culture has a different name for it. Nirvana to the Buddhist, Brahma to the Hindus, uh, collective unconscious to the uh, the materialists. Ultimately, though, I came to discover that the uh, the light. Is He's such an intellectual. Like I said, I came to discover that the light inside us truly is the resonant energy of the frequency of the vibrational nodes of the universe in connection to the the god spirit what the fuck what is one and the paths are many and everything and everyone is interconnected to the same omnipresent collective soul that we call God. And even science has come to say, you know, that everything is made up of energy. We all have these different words for essentially the exact same thing. But ultimately, because I was always seeking God and the truth about the purpose of life, was I able to find it? I didn't really get, quote unquote, involved in politics until 2020. What catalyzed you to uh, get involved? Ooh, that's really interesting. My man said, I didn't get involved in politics until 2020. 
so at all. My man was like completely apathetic and then went like crazy hard right way. That's an interesting take actually because like if you are completely politically inexperienced, like let's say you've never heard of anybody or have any like educational basis for understanding what's happening in the United States right now. And then all of a sudden you just start like if you get shown something by a friend or whatever or you get like pulled in by some really like intense sounding headline like some really hard clickbait and you just get dragged down like a a hard like alt-right rabbit hole on the internet I guess that's how this guy got caught I don't know some this guy this guy went from zero to to straight up insurrectionist jeez involved in politics um well his phone says prison slash jail. I love it. Is that like an automatic iPhone? Does the iPhone go like, yeah, uh, new iPhone uh, 33S comes with uh, auto ID for prisons. It, it doesn't just say prison slash jail anymore. It tells you whether it's a prison or a jail specifically. Uh, or did he like type in prison jail as the contact for this? That is a funny story. Um, let me start by saying that... Uh, oh, shit, his phone's about to die. Andrew, plug your shit in, bro. Plug your phone in, bro. What are you doing? A fish does not know that it's swimming in water. Why do people do this? I don't like this. I don't like that at all. Anytime you ask somebody a straightforward question, uh, especially when they're talking about, like, psychic like energy stuff and like when they're talking about some stuff that's already a little bit wild uh like you said drug manu said drugs are drugs man uh i i agree with that um he asked a straight question what got you involved in politics and this man said ah a fish doesn't know that it stop Stop giving some roundabout simile metaphor okay. for your... And the sane person in an insane society will appear insane, so... Oh, what? I gotta go back. I was memeing on him and missed what he said. Hold up. Um, I like how you can see his lips. Just zooming in. Straight on that boy's lips. A fish does not know that it's swimming in water, Okay. And a sane person in an insane society will appear insane. So, that being said, everything I'm about... That sounds crazy, though. Like, that's that's the thing. That's what everybody said. That's, like, I think the basis for, like, very minimal sanity checks. My man said, a fish doesn't know that it swims in water. Which, first off, that's a whole, that's a whole can of worms. What are you doing? What... That's such a weird philosophical. It has nothing to do with anything. That's just a that's just a red herring. It makes it seem like it has something to do with it. it has absolutely nothing to do with the the logic of it. And then he says, um, "An insane, a sane person in an insane society will appear insane." Yeah, but that's not the way it works. Like. The way that we base our sanity is based on the general sanity. Like, what what the baseline for most people in the world is. There's, like, a general consensus. If you're hard off the general consensus, that's what we base it on. If, you're, if you feel like everyone in your society is crazy and you're the only sane person, you're the crazy one. That's just a baseline check. Anytime anything's happening in your life, if you ever feel like... Is everybody else? Everybody else is crazy. It's not me. Crazy. That, that's the definite. I mean, dude, like people do need to be able to legitimately get like therapeutic help and stuff. You don't need to consider yourself crazy or whatever to get therapeutic help. Uh, you know, I've gone to therapy before in my life. Like it's just a thing that people can do to, to sort of uh, benefit themselves, you know, learn about themselves. Uh, I always pro therapy, but this actually throws me because it's just illogical. Like his arguments are just not self-reflective, even though he's like painting them as if they are. He's saying them as if they're like these really deep, insightful, spiritual advice, pieces of wisdom that he's gained through his shamanism. And really, 
he's failing to observe like massive logical flaws that would point out his own concerning behavior uh, it just has it like i'm i'm sorry to be judging i'm sorry to be going in but this guy come on man i i didn't know what i expected from q shaman but come on dude about to say i ask people to keep an open mind and an open heart and try and understand that you know where i'm coming from is a place that is you know from literally thousands of hours of research and i'm a very skeptical and rational person and the only way i'm ever going to believe anything skeptical rational person who believes that everyone else is crazy but him My man said, I'm completely rational. 100% saying, no crazy here. Okay. Also, we have four viewers. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, the Duke says, that's the problem with the Republic because the people has control of the government. If the people are corrupt and unstable, the government will also be corrupt and unstable. Uh, Iron says, unless you count Dominica, why the purple flag? Uh, great question. Uh, I enjoy uh, purple. Purple's a very unused thing, so it's unique. Um, the purple for us represents uh, our people and our our uh, specific creation. You know what I mean? Purple is unique. We feel as though we are unique. Uh, there's actually a, a lot more background that I want to get into on that uh, for another video, but uh, the basics of it are uh, it is a way to define Eternians as unique uh, amongst all the world. Uh, we are trying to gain our independence through legitimate means. We are pursuing that through uh, technological advancements. Uh, the purple is uh, something that for uh, a long time wasn't used in flags and wasn't used in many you know, fabric work. Uh, because of how expensive it was to get purple dye. Now, through technological advancements, purple dye is something that's really cheap and, you know, about the same cost as any other dye. So, uh, the thing that's wonderful about the advance of technology is that it brings the things that are supposedly luxuries, and, you know, very far off, uh, f uh, very far off benefits for the average person and brings them uh, to the front and center so that everybody can have an opportunity to have a better quality of life. That's what the purple is for us. It is our advancement through technology. It is the promise that we make to our citizens to be able to provide them with those benefits and those luxuries as our technology increases. And it shows that we can level the playing field between the people who come before us, those who are the wealthy elites, those who are the people who were able to don the purple before us and that we are now able to take that on for ourselves. We are able to uh, change the world and take the purple on for uh, Eternia, provide that to our people uh, who deserve it. So that's why. Uh, the advance of technology and our use of technology as a tool uh, to be able to liberate ourselves and uh, provide freedom and benefits for all of those that follow us and consider themselves Eternians. Eternia forever, everybody. Uh, wear that purple with pride. Um, ooh, uh, Richard joined us. Uh, Richard, it's good to see you. Richard would be uh, a great example of someone who dons the purple with pride, someone who uh, always represents Eternia and uh, is a wonderful supporter of ours. So thank you for being here, Richard. We are watching the crazy uh, QAnon shaman guy go off. Uh, Rachel, it's good to see you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Republic of Barlesco, it's good to see you. How are you? Uh, Manu says... Uh, fish obviously feel different if they're outside water. Humans, uh, a far smarter species, are told all our lives that there are others who live differently than we do in our mo local community. Galena says, yes, but they do not know what substances are. They can feel and do anything a basic organism can, but they don't know what a computer is. Uh, goodness. This is, this is so crazy. Uh, Galena says, no, I disagree. They... Don't know what pretty much anything is besides blah blah. Oh goodness, y'all are getting into just such like hard philosophical debates on this. Uh, Iron says, "Do you watch Country Balls?" Uh, I do. We've actually made a, a Country Ball animation. We have like a recent one that we threw up on the channel uh, not too long ago. If you haven't hit up this boy yet, hold up. Let me jump over to our content. Let me jump over to the place you need to be. Uh, how to micronation the basics? If you haven't seen that video. 
go hit up that video. Uh, it has uh 337 views right now if you go check that out uh it's a cool country ball thing that we did uh and it would help a lot uh also iron uh please subscribe it, it also helps us a lot uh, i don't know how familiar you are with the channel but we're creating a country we've been developing it for it over is, three yeah, years now uh, from five. more than one angle and i've heard it from more than one source and you know i it's a you know uh, ding the little uh, the little truth bell inside of my heart. So I always knew that DC was corrupt. And when I heard about Podesta's leaked emails to the public, I started to read them with a mild curiosity. Um, then I started to notice a very strange pattern in the emails and many of the other emails that were leaked and how it involved most of the, like, like some of the most powerful DC moguls, like, you know, Clintons and you know, the Obamas and Bidens and and how it involves celebrities and international bankers. And um, the big picture became crystal clear. And it was not even a week or two later that the first Q drop appeared. Um, and uh, all the research pointed to Q being, uh, being the beginning of uh, full disclosure. And I came to conclude that Q was involved at the highest levels of the military and the intelligence community. And, uh, that it, Q was involved with like things like the deep underground military bases and uh, black budget uh, technologies and stuff like that above top secret information. And um, ultimately, Q involved the warring factions of the deep state, what some people have called. See, 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 that's where it gets wild. That, I mean, it got wild to begin with. My man started off his conversation with weird theory stuff, but... My man's now talking about QAnon, deep state, conspiracy, crazy. Uh, Aiden uh, jumped in and said, I had a tournament idea. It's basically a robots competition on Funky Friday. Funky Friday micro rhythmos. I had to make up a word. I appreciate it. Very cool. Uh, that sounds like a cool thing. I have played uh, a little bit of Roblox before, but I haven't done it a ton on the channel. Uh, I, I would be interested. I I'll look into it for sure. Um... Uh, Barleska says, on the position of my micronation, it's hard to keep it alive because of its weather. Ooh, tell me about that. Uh, also, Arcobia says, LOL, fish may not know they are fish. However, I bet they know the difference between being in water and outside of water. That's very true. They probably don't know what water is and what air is, but they do know what they can breathe in and what they can't breathe in. Uh, Galena says, yes, true, but they do not know much mental stuff. They know a lot of physical stuff, including swim, 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 but they barely know any mental stuff, including blub, blub. Ah, you guys are memeing so hard. Y'all are in the mind of a fish. You you are the new uh, conspiracy. Uh, the It's the fish conspiracy. It's all the fish deep state who secretly know about how to... Uh, uh, the conspiracy that everything really is water that is all water that we could all breathe outside the water if we only jumped at the same time and all revealed that the entire planet is actually water that there's no uh, land masses above the water uh, oh goodness <sighs> this this video is getting to me uh, called the alliance versus the cabal and then what we were experiencing was kind of like a mind war and this mind war over the minds of the, the population my man's fighting mind wars my man's fighting mind wars in real life my man's fighting mind wars on the steps of the capitol hitting police officers with because of the mind war my man's actively mind warring through the prison slash jail phone call into Andrew's head. Andrew, don't let him mind war you. Look at him on his, his computer. He's mind warring him. Just what I end up affecting the timelines that we created as a species, almost like hijacking our co-creative abilities, and uh, that would determine the fate of humanity. So what do you think the deep state like wants for the fate of humanity? Like if they had their way and every sinister plot they are trying to arrange came true, like what would our day-to-day -day life look like? What they want is centralized power through corruption. They want to negate the three-branch uh, checks and balances, uh, three-branch government system, and maintain and expand the corrupt government bureaucracy. I mean, 
the government's kind of every like what are you what are you trying to expand into my guy what's your so they basically want no freedom full totalitarian control um, they want control and access to all of our biometric data all of our medical records all of our financial records all of our personal data they want to know all of it and control all of it they want private companies already do that if you've ever given your your DNA to like Ancestry.com or 23andMe or whatever, they already have your biometric data or whatever. They have your DNA. Uh, you know, if you've ever been arrested before, like this guy now, uh, he had his fingerprint taken. Uh, if you've ever been to the hospital, they have your uh, blood, you know, uh, your blood type. Uh, <sighs> what what do you hide if you go on the internet and you click on stuff they have your data if you've ever signed up for a subscription service they have your address like who's he hiding his data from you're not if you're interacting in society everyone knows all your shit want to make things like uh, vaccines mandatory there no body. they don't have to create a the new world order government to figure out what your facebook password is they got it they already know chill Autonomy, no free choice, you know, chips in your hand type of thing. Um, think, look at all you think like communist China, except in the United States and all over the world. That I mean, they're just they're just there already. Like communist China just exists, and they just they're just there. They're just doing their thing. You know, it's it's fine. They're doing it. I guess I don't know. That is what the deep state. Also, so then is it China? Like, is he just saying the deep state's China? Because if so, what? It's China? It seems weird, but okay. My man thinks Xi got a, got a bigger game than he does. My man thinks Xi's about to uh, checkmate. Is looking to do, and somebody may say, "Well, that can't, that won't happen in the United States." And I would say to those people, "Well, Z's play, uh, she's playing 4D chess." Oh gosh, I'm sorry, but this guy just makes me feel so goofy. This guy's so silly. Okay. Ooh, we got 11 viewers. I appreciate y'all hanging out. Also, please remember to like the stream. Also, please remember to subscribe. Also, please remember to hit the notification bell because, like, only 30-something percent of people have hit the notification bell. Uh, Iron says, I'm going to sleep now, 9.30 in Masao. Uh, good luck. Have a good night. We will see you soon. And please continue to support us and help us out. Eternia forever. Ryan says, no, he is saying it's bad. Uh, like the regime in China is bad. I know Ryan, but is it the regime in China? Like he's saying, but imagine it's that, but all over the world, but in the United States. So it's like, okay, so there are people in the United States who just want communism. Like that's known. That's a thing. They're active political. You don't have to like, it's not a deep state. They're there. Like there are communists who just do want that. There are authoritarians in the United States. They're fascists. You know what I mean? Like, you can just find these people. They're not, like, hiding. Like, it's not, like, a weird deep state thing. You can just go on the internet and find those people. Those people just ex exist. Uh, ooh. Uh, Manu says, okay, I think there isn't much left about fish we can talk about. But it's all the deep state, Manu. You forget. Arcovia says, the dude lost me faster than the series of lost the moment he brought fish into the conversation. You know it. Yeah, my man was like, oh, how'd I get into politics? Well, a fish in water. Oh, my God. Shut up, dude. Okay. Uh, Ryan says, the IRS can audit your financials. Yeah, it's not like people don't have all your information. Not everybody has all your information, sure, but it's not that many steps away. It is. You can figure it out pretty quick. Um, Iron says Massachusetts. Ooh, nice. Uh, have a good night, Iron. Uh, Aiden says Burlesca. Then I will tell you to resort to defending your flag production. What? Interesting. Um, 
Aiden says, uh, Ryan says playing 40 chess with who? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, he, I guess with himself, because apparently the deep state is just China. He's playing with himself, just as a game. Uh, he's testing himself. Maki says, for me, it's 3.30. Thank you for hanging out with us, Maki. It means a lot. Manu says, powerful people have always looked for ways to control everyday people, obviously. Yeah, but it, he's claiming, like, oh, it's this weird hidden thing. It's not. They don't need to hide it. They can say, the way that I'm controlling your stuff is through banking. The way that I'm controlling your stuff is through, you know, the laws that are created and established that benefit me. Like, it's not, it's not like a deep, subversive, you know... If anybody found out about this, it'd be crazy. It's in the laws. It's just written. There are things that are biased and things that are problematic and things that uh, create uh, financial difficulty for people. Just written in the laws actively. Uh, there's a lot of protections and benefits that are given to corporations about your data. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, like the, oh, what is it? Is it the Patriot Act? Something. Uh, that allows like the government to just like look at all of your internet data and just do like really intrusive searches without the need for a warrant or anything like there's just th all that exists already you know companies can look at your data the government can look at your data it's it's just in the laws it's not like a secret underground hidden thing uh in the united states uh, Jose says, is the attorney are really going to be a real micronation? Uh, we are a real micronation. Uh, we are planning to achieve uh, full recognized nationhood uh, amongst all nations. We don't want to just be a micronation. We want to be uh, a macronation. Uh, so that's the attempt. Right now, we are actively a micronation. We consider ourselves a country, a nation. Uh, we are actively growing to increase our land, increase our uh, ability to produce. We already have industries that are making us money right now. Uh, besides our uh, uh, besides our Patreon uh, and our YouTube, uh, we also have our Etsy, which is producing a lot of goods for us, including helping us to fund and grow our metals refining industry, which we just did a video on. Um, so yeah, uh, Jose, if you want to learn more about attorneys industry and how we're developing, uh, I recommend you check out that video. It's on uh, the uh, DIY. Uh, at home metal uh, metal factory so yeah I recommend you check it out uh, Ryan says Maoists be here already uh, Galena says they're Maoists uh, there's a lot of fish still uh, there's a lot about fish still that's true Ryan you could you could go on fish um, Burlesca says uh, and Casa Grande did the unbelievable raid the embassy of my house my room because I accidentally stepped on the flag of the region got him uh, you can't be stepping on those regional flags. Uh, Manu says, I think it's actually easier in the U.S. to collect data. Uh, you just need to offer people a cool-looking app. Agreed. Yeah, it's not hard at all. Um, Manu says, they'll happily tell you everything about them. Yes. Ryan says, some of the MLs in the USA are Maoists. Uh, Aiden says, Burlesca, I will also tell you to defend your embassy. Galena says, I mean like Maoists in our chat. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Who is a Maoist? Hit him up. Uh, Ryan says, like, humans in, are in the fish clad, Maoists are in the chat, identity yourself, Maoists in the chat, identify yourselves, said Ryan. He, he pulled the trap card, he said, reveal, reveal yourselves. Uh, Burlesca says, and also my country, uh, more burlesque, and I did my own writing system. Very nice, uh, unique culture, always a plus. Aiden said, I would also tell you to defend your own writing system. What? What are y'all talking about? I think you skipped some comments, said Jai. Yeah, I sure did, I skipped a whole bunch of them, but... I want to hit play. If there's a big one that I missed that you want me to go back to, let me know. Well, how far are we from two weeks to stop the spread? You know, I think that COVID is proof that uh, the corruption that we're dealing with is not just in the United States, but that it's global. I mean, like, vaccines are being used to as an excuse to do all sorts of things. I, mean, it's uh, it's, it's, I think it's only a matter of time before they're used to round up and detain enemies of the New World Order or of the deep state. I mean, this virus is only killing less than 1% of the population. So I think that the ultimate end goal is to have a two-tiered slavery system where you have free-range slaves that are in the cities and they're being used as like workhorses to create a large generation of tax revenue for these black budget operations. Um, and uh, these people live in the cities. These people are monitored by like the deep underground bases, by these classified technologies. Tripping. Tripping. What? He gave no context. Like, his thing doesn't make sense already. 
But even if you're going to believe whatever his weird, like, rant that he went on earlier is, he gave no explanation or credit to the reason that that's going to happen or how it's going to happen in his mind. He just went, there's a deep state. Basically, here's a two-tiered slavery system. And he goes, okay, so how'd you get from one to the other? And he goes... Let me explain the two-tiered slavery system. What are you talking about? Um, these people in these this cities are insane. basically like held hostage by the corrupt deep underground bases. And then there would be the FEMA camps or the concentration camps, um, which, you know, these things, believe it or not, may already exist uh, if you look into the... I was going to say, you notice, and I, I keep pausing it, you notice how Andrew has said, like, maybe three things and sure they could have edited it to cut down on how much Andrew was talking I don't think they did I think this man they may have cut it down on his talking Andrew may have said like one thing one or two things but this man went for hours this man went for at least 44 minutes uh Andrew saying minimal things to prompt a new conversation and just kind of letting this guy go uh, ooh, I don't even, I don't even like it, man. Like, it's a thing where if you have concise, logical arguments, first off, you're probably trying not to stretch it out a ton unless you're doing like a show or something where you're trying to keep audience attention and make a certain time or something. But you kind of, in a back and forth conversation with someone, want to like, answer their question and explain their thing and then allow them time to like prompt you for another thing and continue going. Of course, it's an interview for a show, so it's good that his guest is talking a lot. That's what you're here to see. But this man, I think, doesn't have the self-awareness to realize that like you're so far down the rabbit hole, dude. You're so just brainwashed. Like you can't talk for that long without giving the person you're talking to a breath to even like respond without thinking like maybe maybe supporting myself with you know my own ideas and, and theories instead of any like external evidence or proof seems like it would just lead me to further like uh, you know uh, to become more extreme and to become more like set in my views uh, instead of actually learning much negative self-awareness way that certain walmarts have been shut down and converted i mean the the, stu the same stuff we're talking about happened in nazi germany it happened in the ussr it happened and is happening right now in communist china so where does trump fit into this whole thing well you know that's a good question um that this whole idea of pizzagate and the the info that was dropped during pizzagate was almost like a trial run and uh, it was conducted to disclose the truth to the public prior to the 2016 election. So uh, the public knew what was really at stake and people like Hillary Clinton couldn't get in. And the point is, is that Q was like the next step, I think, in the intel drops. And so after understanding what in the Q community is known as the Q clock, um, the way that the timestamps and the gap code... Oh, what the fuck? This is so deep. This is so deep down the rabbit hole oh shit what the fuck I, if somebody's more familiar with alt-right conspiracy theories than i am please educate me on what this shit is and the gap code work why did it take an outsider to finally deliver Corruption at highest levels. Q what? From Joseph K what? The Q drops and how they all relate to Donald Trump's tweets and how they're What? 
used a lot of the same verbiage in the tweets as well as in the drops, and they, they all, a lot of the time, they occur, occur around the same exact time, and the way that certain messages are put out, you know, in, in time or in lockstep with his tweets and all that stuff, they, they were using uh, numbers to communicate a much larger and broader message that if you put the puzzle pieces together, it made perfect sense. It seemed to me that Trump was a part of something a lot bigger. That, 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 that Trump being at the helm and in the presidency, he was he was a part of this faction within the military industrial complex, within the quote unquote deep state, the good guys that were trying to free humanity. So, whoa. So, Trump is the deep state, but he also is trying to help from in the deep but he's also the most recognized political figure on the earth when he takes the presidency uh, one of the most like recognizable like iconic political figures on the face of the earth what what you but he's a good guy he's he's helping he's doing it and also that if it was like an underground conspiracy that everybody everybody hated him and they didn't want him to to reveal the truth or whatever why didn't he do it in the four years that he was president and why why is it now like a why why wouldn't they kill him if you go along with the conspiracy theory why wouldn't they kill him why wouldn't he just be dead and then it'd be like oh now he's out of the presidency and he's not alive, so it doesn't matter. It's weird. It's so it's such a weird conspiracy. And they were theory. trying to get rid of this cabal that is essentially full of Marxists and fascists and New World Order types that are trying to enslave the population. So Trump, you know, uh, he was tough on China. He was tough on Russia. He was tough on Iran. He was trying to create peace in the Middle East. You know, he, he released the uh, JFK file. He, um, you know, he created the Space Force. That was also during the Trump administration. There was a declassification of a zero point energy engine and inertia propulsion or anti gravity craft that the Navy put out there. Okay, I'll put it this way. Q is the only major movement in history, as far as I can tell, that is working to disclose the full truth about, say, government special access programs, top secret information and technologies, the truth about things like aliens or interdimensional beings and their role here on the planet. They're the only ones that keep this, this movement was the only portion of any sort of uh, campaign that I've seen in, in history that that is talking about like the breakaway civilization that has been created in these deep underground military bases. It's the only movement that is disclosing the truth about things like looking glass technology, um, the anti-gravity uh, technology or inertia propulsion technology, how it relates to things like time travel and creating timelines, so, um, the way that we have like healing stop, technologies or bro. infinite energy devices, and how all this stuff relates to black budgets and to the endless amount of tax dollars that are being used to create this breakaway civilization. We procured over 1,500 Nazi scientists, doctors, and intelligence agents and brought them over here. We wiped their war records and their war crimes clean. We brought them in, into our government and put them inside. What? Hold up. Let me... Hey, everybody. Um, I, I just wanted to read some comments real quick. Galena uh, is talking about corruption... Uh, corruption kind of does as a leader get corrupt the happiness goes down it's all a matter of ideology freedoms and the life quality index uh, ooh Galena bringing up some interesting things uh, Rich says ah yes famous Kovev oh yeah yeah the Trump thing yeah I get you I get you Rich it's good to see you Rich how are you uh, Mackie says corruption is silent so people don't know so much uh, I don't know. It depends. Sometimes corruption is very, like, out there on display. Uh, there are plenty of uh, examples of just, like, rampant corruption. It's just right there. Like, nobody's hiding it. Uh, Manu says, bro, calm down. This isn't Marvel. Yeah, the, the weird, like, and then there's in interdimensional timelines where the dimensional beings are messing with us, and that's the only way that we can uh, stop people from... Uh, uh, 
allowing abortions. Like, it, like it's a really hardcore thing to I'm get, like, minor political uh, changes. Power in our government bureaucracy during Operation Paperclip. Right, you know, right. Go, so, go I was saying, you know, like... <laughs> He's like, Andrew's like, right, right, but like, let's get back on anything I was asking you. Please, after this 30-minute rant you just went on, let me, let me say something to you, sir. A lot of those things, like, are objectively true, right? Operation Paperclip was real. Operation Mockingbird was real. MK Ultra was also real. But do you think that the more intense stuff in the Q universe, like elite Democrats drinking children's blood, is also real? Here's the thing about that. For thousands of years, that has been something that has been practiced by elite groups in high levels of occultic power, okay, in ancient Rome, um, in ancient Egypt, okay, in ancient Babylon, in um, ancient Sumer, okay, there were, there were high... You got records of what Samaria was like? You got... You got the download, the details on what Samaria was like, and one of the first civilizations. And, you know, you you know you were there. That's crazy, bro. High levels of elites, okay. And these individuals, what they would do is they would consume large amounts of psychoactive plants, and then they would. Is that why you're consuming the large amount of psychoactive plants? He's like, I gotta know what they know. I gotta. I got to look into the eyes of the universe to be able to see the deep state. Jesus Christ. But do so at places like sacred sites, like the pyramids or in temples or near obelisks or out in the desert, you know, or, or you know, it's sacred sites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And when they consume these large amounts of psychoactive plants, they would have these out-of-body experiences where they communicated with interdimensional beings that were of like a higher dimensional realm in the frequencies of light that are not perceived by the five senses. Okay, and they would download large amounts of data in these higher dimensional... Let me just say, you ever download large amounts of data in the higher dimensional sphere? You ever do that with your prison slash jail friend? Data fields that in many cases would go beyond syntax or go beyond the use of words. And uh, these individuals basically expanded their consciousness field to like cosmic levels of proportion and were able to digest these massive amounts of knowledge that most people don't... Hold up. So they took a whole bunch of psychoactive drugs, which made them smarter than everyone else and allowed them to take even more amounts of psychoactive drugs. That's why he's popping off on these drugs. He's like, that's the only way to know things. I can perceive because they're so busy being stuck in their bodies. Now, with all of that said, there's another faction within the ancient Egyptian uh, hierarchy, and that would be like the people that worship Set. Um, and Set. Oh no! Hold up, my my camera just went out while we're tripping about this guy. Oh gosh, let me plug in my other camera. We will get right to this, you guys. Don't worry, we're setting it up for you. Uh, oh goodness, my, my man, my man is so confused, I, I hope someone helps him out, legitimately, like, you know, yeah, this guy, this guy's in jail, this guy is not doing well, somebody check in on him, somebody, somebody get him some help, legitimately, he needs it. This guy needs somebody to really, like, be a part of his life. Try and help him out, because... Oh, man. Okay, so I see... I'm trying to figure out where my webcam is. Hey, there you go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Ooh, why is my other webcam not showing up? What? Okay, guys, I'm having a little bit of t 
difficulty here. I know the screen is just black for you guys. Give me one second so I can try and figure this out. I appreciate the patience. Uh, Golana said, uh, uh, Galania says, I joined late. Uh, we appreciate you joining. Uh, I'm just getting my webcam reset up because I had difficulty with it and we got it. It's, it's doing good now. Just waiting for it to click on. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool deal. Hey guys, it's me. It's the boy. Uh, looking at this craziness. That is like the ancient Egyptian form of Satan. Okay, so Satan worship and Saturn worship are one and the same thing. And so there was this ancient form of Saturn worship in ancient Egypt, where what they would do is instead of consuming large amounts of psychoactive plants, which they did do on occasion, but what they did more than anything is they used things like, say, Hebrew children or children of slaves to uh, do these satanic ceremonies of blood sacrifice. And the whole idea is that they terrified their victims to the point to where their victims had an out-of-body experience. And in this out-of-body experience, their body filled with the adrenaline okay and as their body filled with a bunch of adrenaline they would end up killing them the the victim sacrificing them Ooh. also uh good to see you uh golina Gol, uh golania says uh hey empire of Etonia, could you please tell me what this video is i joined late sure uh this is the interview with the uh QAnon shaman guy uh he's one of the most famous figures from the January 6th insurrection. Uh, today is January 6th. It's a year since that insurrection attempt. And uh, absolutely a horrible thing. It was a tragedy. A lot of people got hurt. Some people got killed. Um, we want to talk about that. We want to talk about what led up to it. And we're watching an interview that this comedian is doing with uh, um, the, this guy from jail. So... Uh, this is what we're watching. Uh, he has, again, some crazy conspiracy theories. This guy is like a QAnon conspiracy theorist. Uh, pretty intense, like, right-wing guy. Uh, but we will we will watch to see what happens next. Two Thanks Saturn, for out. Okay. And in the process, their blood, their adrenalized blood would be drained and poured into, like, a, a chalice or something like that. And when they drank the blood, they were drinking something known as adrenochrome because once the adrenalized blood was hit with oxygen, it changed from, adrena it changed from uh, uh, adrenaline to adrenochrome. Okay, and if people don't believe that adrenochrome is real, all you got to do is watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, okay? Type in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas adrenochrome scene, and you will see that this is a... All you have to do to prove that something is real is to watch a movie. All you got to do is watch a movie, and then you'll know that it's real. Very real thing that you are able to harvest this this chemical, this adrenalized blood, and drink it or, or ingest it, and it will be like a, an intense psychedelic high. And these individuals would end up using this uh, understanding that they had just for themselves and creating sort of like an elite group cast that kept everybody else marginalized and ruled. A lot of the time, it was the same bloodlines that were moving from one empire to the other around the globe and erecting these empires based off of the same ritual magic okay ritual and, magic. Uh, they would infiltrate the gene pools of certain ecosystems or certain nations see this is where I feel like the, yeah this is where the racism starts coming in really hard uh, trigger warning to everybody legitimately uh, if you don't want to hear crazy rant like this may be it, it's already gone off the rails pretty hard but you know, this is where it seems like it might get more hate-filled, but we'll, we'll see. And then they would use these individuals, as they infiltrated the gene pool, they would use their children as, like, higher-level people in power, whether it be making them king or making them a prince or a duke or a sultan or whatever. So this is something that has been going on for quite some time. I mean, if you look into, you know, uh, the, how similar... Um, um, one of the, I forgot his first name, but uh, there was a certain Rockefeller that looks just like John Podesta, and John Podesta looks just like um, the singer from uh, 
uh, what's his name, uh, from Lincoln Park. Um, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on his name. That's Chester her. Bennington. Chester Bennington, thank you. Yeah, they all yeah. look all, like strikingly similar, okay? Uh, what? So you're just saying people look so, like... Okay, but not even really, though. Like the the head shape, a little bit. The the ears are gauged, but you could tell like the guy on the left has like more wrinkles, more kind of like folds and stuff in his ear than the guy on the right. Um, the age, like you know, you could tell wrinkles and stuff, but like different. They look like different people. I don't. The noses are different. Like I don't. I don't know. They look like different. The guy on the left has like a more defined chin than the guy on the right. I don't know. They just look different. Different like hair. I don't know. A Merkel. That's a stretch. In Germany looks just like Hitler. Um, Whoa! Whoa! That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Angela Merkel. Look just like Hitler? That's... That was a stretch. Different eye shape. Different... She's also an old woman versus like a weird grainy 1930s photo. 1920s photo. I don't see it. I don't see it, man. I don't Barbara know what this guy Bush is talking looks about. just like Aleister Crowley. What? My guy, you're tripping. Oh, goodness. What even? What we are talking about is like a 6,000 year old death cult that has been sacrificing children, like what was going on in. Ooh, this guy's tripping. Oh, this guy's crazy. Uh, Golania says, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, Rich says, they barely. Uh, it does, it does make no sense, Rich. Uh, Rich says, honestly, he's really going off. Also, what's happening? Uh, we're watching uh, the dumb QAnon uh, shaman guy explain his beliefs, which is so dumb. Uh, Rich says they barely. Galania says they don't look similar in the slightest. Thank you. Like, all these people that he's showing don't look similar in the slightest. And more so than that, they, he's, he's comparing people who live at, like, vastly different times like, not, you know, of course, he, this guy is showing, like, you know, whichever photos he's going to show. But I don't think there are any photos where you can, like, line them up to look comparison. They don't look anything alike at all. Like, it's not even like you can kind of do it. Uh, they should have just picked people who look closer alike. Um, or even just people that are in the same family. Like, you could just trace back actual family lineages and stuff of people. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. And then make your conspiracy about that. Um... Rich says it's not like he ponders his orb too often. Got him. Uh, Galania says, y'all are, y'all are, y'all are perving a little bit, man. Come on. Uh, Manu says, man, they look nothing alike. Agreed. Uh, Galania says, neither do they. Uh, ooh, we have a, um, I don't know if it's a Russian, Slavic something in the chat. Good to see you. Uh, Manu says, it's like saying all people of a certain race look the same agree well that's the thing that's weird about this that's why i was like trigger warning for like racism coming in hard because once you hear anybody start saying shit like they incepted the gene pool and stuff and then it's like uh you talking about impure genetics my guy you talking about the sanctity of gen you're getting racist that's that's you're you're looking right into the deep end of racism and you're going, do I, do I jump in? Did I, I'm getting the lineup ready. Uh, that's, that's why, that's why I had to give that warning that you already know somebody's about to say some crazy, crazy racist conspiracies as soon as they start off with anything regarding genetics and the altering of genetics. People get hardcore racist with that. Let's continue. And you more so use that as a justification for racism uh, and to create racist ideas and uh, conspiracy theories. And baptism. 
Babylon and in, in the Canaanites where they were sacrificing children to Baal and Moloch and all that stuff. Okay, there's international bankers that own whole economies. There is there international bankers that own whole countries. This is one thing I want to point out about his logic, okay? right? This is another thing that when you are watch, we talk, we're talking about micronations in the internet, right? We're, we're watching this crazy QAnon conspiracy interview thing, and you're like, how does that tie into micronations and the internet at all? Here's a, here's a great example. People who are in the micronational community are, of course, politicians. They're, they're people who are, you know, advocating for some political change. They are political figures at the very least, even if they're not technically politicians or don't consider themselves politicians or whatever. However, all of those people have particular pitches that they're trying to make. They all have things that they're trying to get across, points that they want to establish. Remember, your points need to be logical. Remember that when you're listening to other people for advice or wanting to analyze how successful they're going to be, look at what they're saying and see if it makes sense, if it tracks, if it holds up to scrutiny. Because that's, you know, the best way to deter things like becoming a conspiracy theorist or, you know, joining like a multi-level marketing scheme or something like that. Of course, people who are perfectly uh, logical and perfectly reasonable people can fall for charlatans, can fall for people who are promoting conspiracy theories and propaganda and absolute extremist ideas and, you know, cult-like mentalities and stuff like that. People think that, oh, well, I'm, I'm smart. I'm logical. There's no way I could fall for any of that. But a lot of the time, people who are spouting all that garbage are really charismatic people. A lot of the time, they're really intelligent people. And it's hard to determine for your brain, especially if you like somebody, especially if they're an attractive person or, you know, there's somebody who you really admire because they're in a like strong political position or whatever. It's really easy to lose track of the logic of a conversation. That's what I want to point out here. This guy is using a tactic which can trip you up really easily, but is also a really great thing as an indicator to point out whether or not somebody's being logical. If somebody is at any point just throwing in things to their conversation, which sound like really intense grabbing information, it, it pulls you in because it sounds like this new thing that they're, they're teaching you or that, you know, is unlocked in their conversation. It's this really dramatic point and they just throw them in randomly. They don't fit there. They just make them fit there. It's catchy. It's attention grabbing. But it's not actually building a case. They're not actually giving relevant evidence for what they want or what they're trying to get you to be convinced of. They're just spouting stuff. Like this guy, he says, uh, when talking about, like, well, how do you know, you know, all this blood cult stuff is happening? And he's like, you know, back in ancient Samaria, we have these texts that show... He doesn't even say we have these texts. In ancient Samaria... <coughs> Gosh, golly, excuse me. He's, he's killing me out here with his, his illogicalness. He's killing me. This guy is saying like, oh, well, in all these different places, uh, there were these cults. He doesn't give any evidence for that. He just says that it happens. Then when, you know, further kind of prodded on that to explain more, he just jumps into, you know, there are people who run entire economies. Again, it's a completely disconnected point. It has nothing to do with anything else. There's no buildup. There's no proof to it. There's no connector even to the previous statement. It's just another... <coughs> my career. Another blanket statement um, that I, I really would be concerned about. So pay attention to stuff like that when you're listening to someone's arguments. If it doesn't connect together, if it doesn't string together, you know it's not going to work. It's not going to make sense. Even if somebody has legitimately good points about something, which is a whole nother topic, if their argument doesn't string together, it's not going to work. It's not going to make sense. It's not going to get across to people. This guy has an illogical argument and one uh, that's based off of bad points. But And these individuals are able to control and corrupt whole institutions of government, of corporations, banking. Right. So I just wanted to say, you know, I, I feel that when people talk about ritual murder and the satanic sacrifice of children, I think that raises a lot of red flags for people 
uh, in terms of like anti-Semitism, because I mean, people use what they call blood libel all throughout the 20th century to provide justifications for genocide. Yep, 100%. Uh, so Ryan as well mentioned this in the chat, and I want to bring that up. He, he brought that up a minute. It's anti-Semitic dog whistles. Uh, 100%, yes. Uh, just, like, just like he said, it's a very good point. Dog whistles. They are literally points that are designed to attract attention, specifically to people who already have been like pre- pre sort of set up to have like these beliefs if you can get somebody to start teetering on the edge of you know extremist ideology then if someone comes along who seems to support or promote that ideology then they'll feel like they're getting more proof more instances of examples to support their opinions and their ideas which is really just another lead further down the rabbit hole. It's this thing where, uh, you know, they're, they're saying these things and, and prompting these ideas like this blood libel where they are, you know, they're saying, oh, well, if we can get you to believe this a little bit, then you'll believe, you know, all of these further racist things. And you'll feel like the racist things have a connection because the thing before it wasn't, inherently racist even though it is it, it slowly it slowly increases the gradient of racism and extremism until you go from like zero to a hundred and that's that's the thing that's so gross about all of this is that people feel like they're making very logical very intelligent insights into the information and that people just aren't looking at it hard enough and people just don't understand hard enough when they're walking head over heels into the traps and the you know carrots that are being led to them further and further into extremism it's really sad and it's really crazy to watch and to see this guy's sort of own you know racist sort of intense extremist ideology get backtracked by this comedian this, this guy he's a comedian but he's also you know just a reporter He's backtracking and talking about the ideas, letting this guy explain his full thing and then saying, OK, so let's stop there. Let's look at this one instance of where you're saying a thing. This is connected to something problematic and racist. How, how are you, you know, justifying this and then continuing to explain it and just unfolding all of the actual connections that are involved in all of this uh, and, and showing the anti-Semitism? Uh, Golania says, agree, anti-Semitism is truly uh, an unpreventable horror to humanity. Uh, Ryan says conditioned. Agreed. Uh, I think it is conditioned 100%. Uh, and it sucks. These people are like preconditioned to, to uh, want to, uh, uh, to want to feel like they're getting justified and being more racist and more extreme. And it was kind of spread as propaganda because, you know, saying that someone eats babies is like the worst thing you can say about someone pretty much it's like if you know you lose all your friends like if you know if, if, if people think you eat babies like it's over for your right. career and, and so, social life so well, and I think it's I important I, to note I, here though that first of all you're absolutely right and there have been many people that have been maligned and been demonized uh, as dark occultists and it turns out that they're not you know, um, there have been a lot of people that have taken the rap when, you know, they weren't doing any of these things. Like you said, it was just, you know, negative propaganda campaigns. So then maybe you shouldn't go around calling people dark occultists. You know what I mean? Like he's he's willfully admitting and he's going, you're 100 percent right. There have been plenty of cases of people coming out and being called dark occultists and they're not and they're innocent. So flip that on the head. How many times have people been accused of being dark occultists and it come out to be true? Barely any, if any at all. Like, I, I haven't heard of one single instance in popular media of anybody being like, oh, we found out they were an occult. Oh, we got them. They were part of the Illuminati. Oh, we got one more. Never. It never happens. Uh, so... Why Why would you believe that something that has never happened and continues to be disproven every single time you do it, that, you know, oh, that person wasn't an occultist? Uh, you, why don't you think maybe we should stop targeting these people and doing a, like a witch hunt, you know? Why wouldn't you instead 
just think, hey, maybe it's not the right answer. Maybe there aren't these occult, crazy occultist people that we think are running the world governments. And so we need to chase them down and hunt them down and point them out and destroy anybody's career who we think could be involved until it comes out that they weren't. And then we just say, oh, okay, well, it wasn't them. Sorry, let's move on. But I also think it's important to note here that there's people that say, oh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Hebrews that are doing it, or it's, you know, it's the Satanists that are doing it, or whatever. What you got to keep in mind is that, first of all, real Hebrews would never do anything like that. Ooh, ooh, gross take, gross take. Are you ready for a gross take? Uh, blow your nose, because that's a gross take. Got some infection in it. That's a gross take. Uh, multiple things. Uh, Ryan, again, coming out with these hard facts. I appreciate Ryan uh, saying condition. Also, uh, uh, Galania coming out with these hard facts. Uh, Ryan says flat earth stuff is also anti-Semitic. The deeper in it you go. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some of that too. Ryan says, but it's different when I do it. I was saying that like, yeah, other people's uh, witch hunt or whatever is, is like fake. And we realize that they weren't you know, really, whatever. But when I'm hunting down these people, they're the real people. They, I, I'm doing the good fight. Uh, that's so silly. Uh, Galanius is Red Scare, but with cults. Uh, well, even worse. Because the Red Scare was like a horrible, like, generalization of, like, extremism that wasn't nearly as prevalent as it was described. And also a way to just, like, marginalize and target political opposition. Uh, but that political opposition was at least like real to some extent. The the Red Scare part, that's the part that became crazy, was the conspiracy. The concept that like, yeah, everybody's like, you know, there are all these communist spies that are infiltrating the U.S. And so we have to round up anybody that we even think is a communist and throw them in prison. Um, that's, yeah, for sure got extreme. And yes, that had racism to it too. And yes, that had a whole bunch of problems as well. Uh, you know, as a way to target minorities and, uh, you know, political opposition. But this one is even worse because it's not even founded on anything that's like substantial or reasonable. It's not founded on like another legitimate, actively open political opposition like communism. At the time, communism was like something that was actively being promoted around the world and something that, again, for like racist and like ideological reasons, uh, the United States was trying to, like, create scapegoats and targets of communism, but at least it was, like, socially relevant at the time. This is a thing that's just coming out of, like, the racist woodwork, and it's just being, like, there's not a real reason for any of this. We just needed something, so we created a really long, elaborate conspiracy that nobody really understands the logic behind or can get behind because everybody's just trying to justify their own racist ideology. Uh, and, and get back to when America was the good old place that it was at some point. It's so gross. Uh, Manu says, uh, there's a defining, uh, there's like a defining characteristic that makes them undistinguishable. They both wear glasses. They look the same. Uh, agreed. It's very weird. Uh, Manu says he's literally trying for it to make sense. He's trying so hard. Ryan says they don't need to be logical though. Golana says, my points are, look at how successful a truly happy nation is. This aligns with our goal of being the happiest nation on earth. I'm glad to hear, Golania. Manu says, it's like 10-year-old me uh, theorizing about video games. Fair enough, being like, there's not really any evidence in the game that like shows as to why this is. But wouldn't it be cool if this and this and this? I agree with that. Yeah, they're definitely like uh, fandom people who... It, it's like the uh, MatPat conspiracies or whatever. Uh, but if, if Matt Pat was just an actual hardcore conspiracy theorist, uh, it's, it's that, uh, we're undoing a Matt Pat theory right now that caused January 6th. Um, Ryan says anti-Semitic dog whistles, not that it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's that you don't know what the coded language is referring to. Uh, but I also think the way he, what I'm arguing is the way that he structures his argument is also just illogical. Like, he is not providing the explanations for the dog whistle. He's just throwing the dog whistle out. So, yeah, you're right. It's like, I don't understand some of that, which makes it harder. But I think even if you did have the definition for all those things, it still wouldn't be a perfectly, you know, logical, cohesive argument. Um, 
Ryan said, uh, oh, Manu says, why would they even do that? Uh, how can it make sense to him? He's too deep in the rabbit hole of stupidity. Yes, yes, he is. Manu says, this is a whole other level than the Red Scare. Exactly, because it's not even like it's a politically relevant thing. It's just like grabbing at straws to justify and define your like racist attack. Um, White one says, so AP, I took that political compass you took again, and I'm full right-wing authoritarian, 10 out of 10. Oh, goodness. Interesting. We will we will have to discuss this in the future, White one. That's a shocking score, actually. That's pretty crazy. We will We will see how this develops. But let's keep watching this. When you say they worship Saturn, are you talking about the planet? Yes, yes. Satan worship and Saturn worship are one and the same. Is it just because they sound similar, or is there a, a no, no, connection? No, no, no. We're talking people that understand the the intricacies of a tr of astrology, interconnectivity, or what is called quantum entanglement in the quantum uh, field, um, or. Uh, Ooh, stop. Stop using other words that actually mean things to... Uh, so Ryan's going to get me here because I know he's going to be like, well, all the things actually mean things. You just don't know. I don't like that he's mixing like actual, which which is in his defense a great way to like pad your argument if you don't have real substance for it. Like if you don't have a legitimate way to to build an argument just throw shit that is like a trigger word onto what you're saying especially if it's like an intellectual like dog whistle like something that makes it seem smart and like relevant you just throw it on top of there and then say it's good famous example the man said quantum mechanic you know people who understand astrology which is like connecting when you were born to the stars and quantum mechanics, which is like a fundamental field of physics. Ooh, stop just throwing quantum mechanics on there and be like, ah, that's it. Um, gross, gross to throw stuff that just is, that, that are words that people have heard before and, and, you know, have heard people that they respect say, and then they just throw it on top of there and just serve it as this weird, like, surprise surprise mashup it's nasty uh, the man. way that um, electromagnetic um, fields are nested and the way that electromagnetic fields are nested my man said it's you know astrology quantum mechanics the way that electromagnetic fields are nested this man's a genius oh my goodness why haven't we been all listening to him for all of our intellectual scientific you know he should just write all textbooks from now on honestly he just when knows that you um, contribute certain energies to a certain electromagnetic field there are certain effects that happen within the ecosystem or within that's so weird and doesn't make any sense like this is where you can see he's hard grasping for straws when you impart certain energies into certain electromagnetic fields, it creates certain effects which have certain changes on the ecosystem. He said, basically, electromagnetic field stuff happens, so stuff happens and stuff happens, and the environment. That's what that man just said. And the electromagnetic uh, nested um, uh, ball of yarn, shall we say. No, we won't say that because it doesn't make any sense, QAnon shaman. Stop. Stop balling on stuff that you don't know. Uh, Ryan said racist techno. Oh, uh, Ryan said quantum. Yeah, Ryan gets me. Uh, Rich Hack said quantum entanglement is like a whole different thing. He doesn't know what it is. It doesn't matter. He writes a racist techno babble. Manu says, isn't astrology pseudoscience? Yes. Yes, it is. Which is why I'm like, please stop using actual words that have like technical scientific meaning and then throwing it in with like garbage conspiracy theorist mumbo jumbo. Like it, ah. Uh, it's 
it's just so bad. It's just so bad. It's like people who do stuff like saying, oh, I took this vitamin and then it cured my cancer or whatever. Or I, I blended up this different mix of vegetables and it cured my cancer. Or when you say stuff like that, you're creating really harmful information because you're attaching something that may be really important to somebody, you know, and, and a way for somebody to like educate themselves on a really serious issue and just misleading people, misdirecting all the people who may be looking for legitimate information on a topic. And you're just a hardcore fucking them. You just, you just move in all of their ability to, uh, further learn and to further, you know, uh, grow themselves and you're, you're bringing them down that rabbit hole that you're in. It's really gross. Uh, Ryan says, vague in uh, quantum alchemy, strong and weak nuclear force, vague energy. Yeah, just all these words. Ryan says, vague energy is all over ancient alien stuff, which is also really racist. Yeah, we've talked about that before, how ancient alien stuff is really racist. Because uh, the, the Egyptians couldn't have possibly built the pyramids themselves. They had to have aliens teach them the technology to be able to do it. Um, but like, they never say that Europeans couldn't have built the castles, you know, like, it's, it's weird. Right. So and I want to talk and about a little bit more you know. about QAnon. Um, so the mythology of QAnon was all about how this event was going to happen and it was going to be called the storm, which is basically when they stopped the steal, you know, they put Trump rightfully back in the White House and then patriots take control of the country and disempower the deep state. But on December 8th, 2020, QAnon made its last post, which was just a YouTube link to the song, We're Not Gonna Take It, you know, We're Not Gonna Take It, and then pretty much like went dark. And so it's like, I think it leaves a lot of people wondering, like, did the storm happen? Like, <laughs> what's up with the storm? Is it still coming? Like, what's next? Well, um, first of all, I think my man said, was it a light drizzle that then ended and they, they hyped it up a lot? Is it, the, are we in the eye of it? Are we missing it? I'm looking outside. My shit's dry. He said, my whole yard, it looks like it's rainy out here. Actually, it's not. It's just some light condensation. Where's this storm at? I've been waiting. I think that we were in the midst of the storm with all of this COVID stuff. Um I think that uh, we're in the midst of it right now. If you think about the damage that's being done to our economy, to our culture, um, to our uh, national identity, to uh, the, uh, the truth or movement, as it were. Um, but I, I think that it's important that people like realize that um, people now know about child and human trafficking, and they also know about the hundreds of... Questions for Jake. Conditions in jail and psychological impact of incarceration, upbringing in Arizona roots, um, transition into shamanic practice and Native American influence, discovery of QAnon and thoughts on origin and dissemination, mainstream media deception and division tactics focused on unimportant issues like OJ trial to distract us, how is right wing media different, uh, defining deep state Epstein and overemphasized. Uh, do you think right-wing media exaggerates Epstein? Uh, we know there is elite pedophilia. Do you think Q and Pizzagate, Comet, Ping Pong are actually distractions, straw men, right on meant to delegitimize? Um, CIA mind control and the deep state in game operation Epstein suicide cover up do you think stuff like Q is a distraction nonviolent conscious rebellion opinions on Trump hopes for future whoa what crazy underground military bases uh, in the United States and all over the world they also know about things like spiritual parasites and the way that you know psychic vampires play a role they know about adrenochrome what? they know about Bohemian Grove they know about Jeffrey Epstein and his island and all the pedophile networks and the pedophile code they know you said psychic vampires yeah that's what I said that's oh, what the these things are vampires. they're like psychic vampires okay they're like they're like demonic possessed people that, that that's part of what black magic is is you allow your body to be like a vessel for a demonic spirit okay what? so 
people know about the deep state. They know about how blackmail is used in the deep state to cover up uh, the crimes against humanity, how it's all these uh, networks, the pedophile networks and the Mockingbird Media is used to cover up the truth about this breakaway civilization that's going on underneath our feet as we speak. It's, people are being neurolinguistically programmed with the truth. But unfortunately, the, the movement has become fragmented. The, 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 there's people that infiltrate and spread disinformation. Right. So I want to. I just want to go back to the. It's go back to the storm a little bit. Uh, the the sixth of January was supposed to be the storm, right? Is that the case? I don't know. Just I remember <laughs> like in a lot of the flyers that I saw for the sixth beforehand, like that got sent to me. It was like the storm is coming. The sixth is the storm. You know, because, you know, they're going to stop Congress from certifying Joe Biden. And then the 20th was supposed to be the storm, which was Inauguration Day. And I was actually in D.C. for Inauguration Day, and it was a military occupation in the streets. Like, I mean, there was checkpoints on every street. You couldn't even walk around. There was hardly even a celebration crowd for Biden and definitely not really an opposition crowd for Trump. I think a lot of people just got turned off from Q because they saw the goalposts just being moved what felt like over and over again. And uh, I was wondering if you felt like it's possible that QAnon may have been a psyop to delegitimize the truth about things like Operation Mockingbird and Operation Paperclip. Um, there is going to be in any sort of a truth movement there's going to be infiltrators and disinformation agents (laughs) oh that was a weird cut my man went from and like looked straight into the camera to then that face ah ah it got me ugh uh, Galadia said, not only are you creating a harmful info, you're also being super insensitive. Agreed. Uh, Ryan says, our nuclear force is strong and our enemies' nuclear force is weak. Yeah, it's weird. <clears throat> Ryan said, ah, yes, psychic vampires. <clears throat> of course, because we know that all the evil happens from psychic vampires. Manu says, Q is one of the biggest trolls in history. Apparently. Ryan said, you got a lot of people. You got a lot of people in that. Ryan said, there's a lot to unpack there, LOL. Uh, Whitewood says, as a Republican, I say Q is a joke. Uh, yeah, agreed. I, I think everybody uh, thinks it's not a joke, just a harmful conspiracy, actually. Money says, the sandbox ad shows up every day. Goodness. People have to understand that, that what we're dealing with is is a new type of warfare. Okay, it's a new type of warfare. It's information and economic warfare. And I think that a lot of people are looking, uh, they're missing the forest, they're, what is it, mistaking the, they're missing the forest for the trees, is that, is that the, is that the saying? And this, the final battlefield for this global war that we're in is the mind. And I do not believe that Q is a tabloid straw man because the the movement was not in the tabloids until it began to supersede and threaten the mockingbird media. And the truth is always rejected, resisted, dist- uh, uh, despised, and demonized before it's accepted. So um, with that said, I think that I think that we have to look at the wins. There's been lots of resignations like Cuomo, the Cuomo brothers. All sorts of CNN producers are being proven to be pedos. The child trafficking is being exposed. The vax mandates are dead in the water. Omicron is probably going to create a massive global herd immunity without too much adverse side effects. Let's go brand. Oh, my God. Brandon is taking over the entire nation. I mean, that's... And of all places on college campuses with... Can I just... What? So, ah, this guy, this guy's so concerning. A lot to unpack. I'll just, I'll just let it keep going. I, ugh. 
where they were hoping to indoctrinate all these people to be Marxists. Parents are standing up to school boards and CRT is dead in the water. Kyle Rittenhouse's acquittal was a huge win for the Second Amendment. I mean, for Christ's sake, Black Lives Matter and Trump supporters were marching against the vaccine mandates, for crying out loud. We are now going to have free speech um, uh, alternatives to social media. Cancel culture is being canceled. People are realizing that woke is broke, man. You know, the, the world's waking up. Everybody's standing in solidarity. What are you talking about? Standing up against what, though? Like, people wanting civil rights? Like, you're saying that Black Lives Matter protesters are standing up against their own movement? Like, you know, a lot of the... Because a lot of the things he's talking about, like, he's saying, oh, we're now having more... For example, social media, like other social media, uh, conservative social media that's being developed because people who were being like right wing extremists and racists were getting kicked off of the social media, you know, uh, the, the popular social media for being extremists. So he's like, yeah, now all the extremists have a place where they can be extremists just out in the open. Isn't it great? Isn't that what? people are fighting for it and they're like no what are you talking about you you're confused i don't even think it's that he's confused i think he's crazy but i think he's like intentionally he knows what he's doing he's taking these concepts which are against each other and which do not work together and he's trying to say it as if everything's aligning for his own views and his own purpose when there's no evidence for that at all together bro so it's going to take some time that's just all there is to it it's going to take some time so i think that what people need to do as opposed to being demoralized is they need to pick a hill and have an indomitable will they need to stop putting okay the hill is don't be racist don't try to destroy society don't try to reduce the quality of life of other people around you to get your way all their hopes in one person or in one group because then their hope is so easily lost you know they need to be the change that they want to see in the world you have to be the change you want to see fight with all your might you know what i'm saying but do you uh are you allowed to talk about january 6th i'm i'm not going to talk about that i've been advised by my lawyers just to, to leave that situation alone okay well i guess do you feel like trump should have done more to help you? Well, I feel about Trump the way that I felt about him through that the four years of his presidency. I mean, it's changed slightly with his support of these vaccines, but um, he took the deep state and the corrupt bureaucracy and the corrupt media on head to head. He went toe to toe with them. And he did that, I think, for the American people and uh, for America in general. I think that took courage and strength. But um, there's other things. Where What's like, he whispered? I, I Change side. Done more to help you? Well, I feel about Trump the way that I felt about him through that the four years of his presidency. I mean, it's changed slightly with his support of these vaccines, but um, he took the deep state and the corrupt bureaucracy. Oh, damn. The corrupt I can't see what he says. Head to head. He went toe to toe with them. And he did that, I think, for the American people and uh, for America in general. I think that took courage and strength. But. Um, there's other things where it's like, I, I look, you know, he built a, the border wall went through a sacred Native American burial ground. They blew up a sacred Native American burial ground on the, on the southern border of, the, of Arizona. My man is too intense. He is all the way inside of a tent. He's that intense. Um, Manu said, ooh, multiple things. Uh, Ryan says, all the bu buzzwords. You know it. We're, we're just taking all of them. We're just throwing them in a hat. We're mixing them up. We're throwing them out there. All the buzzwords. Which one do you want? Galania says, I did see parents screaming at a school board for indoctrinating their kids with Maoism, which I would not condone myself. Maoism? Are you talking about, uh, in the U.S., if you're talking about the, like, critical race theory stuff? Again, that's silly, and it's not accurate. Uh, people were protested about something that wasn't even being taught in schools. And we do need reforms for our schools, but uh, again, like racist rhetoric and stuff causing those things is, is a whole other topic. 
Uh, Manu says, I like when cancel culture is used against cancel culture. Uh, what? What does that even mean? Uh, Ryan says, all the things I don't like, I'll mention real fast. Uh, agreed. If you just are saying a whole bunch of stuff really, really quick, then it's like, oh, maybe everybody will just agree with me. Uh, Ryan, uh, Manu says, USA is so old, it's starting to see things. Goodness. I guess so. Ryan says, be the racist change you want to see. That, that's his motto. Aiden says, fun fact, Pepsi used to be the sixth largest, strongest military in the world. You know it. Nobody's going to stop Pepsi. Um, Galania says, the U.S. is an infant in country terms. Agreed. Uh, Whiteman says, USA is not even close to Egypt. Ryan says, I was just listening to the Lion's Lead by Donkey podcast uh, episode about the Pepsi Navy acquisition. Uh, Aiden says, Egypt is basically a grandpa in terms of history. Uh, Manu says, our Egypt is at least 100 years old. Uh, our Egypt. Interesting. Uh, Whiteman says, great grandpa. Uh, Galania says, yep, in the USA exclamation point getting kids uh uh turning to the far communistic views uh no that's not what happened um people were protesting against what they said was critical race theory being taught in schools critical race theory is a college level academic discussion of institutional racism in the united states from a policy standpoint which is not taught to high school students, middle school students, elementary school students, like those protests were about. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? It people are it's it's just reactionary like propaganda stuff. It you you shouldn't buy into that. You shouldn't believe that. Nobody's teaching, you know, communist principles in schools. Nobody's teaching critical race theory in schools. The way that we teach about institutional racism needs to be, uh, you know, affected. We need to discuss racism in school. We need to discuss, uh, you know, the institutional way that the United States uh, has been designed to affect people of certain backgrounds, whether it's economic or racial, versus others. But we're not talking about that. Uh, and people were protesting because of something that they don't understand and just got upset about because someone started saying it was critical race theory. It was critical race, even though they, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, it is, as Ryan said, uh, just another trigger word. It's just something to make you think you know what you're talking about because you've heard what they've said about it when they don't have any legitimate proof or backing to support the claims that they're making. No. Nobody's teaching communist, uh, you know, propaganda in schools. Whiteman says, no, our Egypt was just a region of the UK with semi-autonomy. Huh. Uh, Ryan says, I wish the schools were actually into communism, though. Uh, agreed. It would be an interesting setup. Uh, Whiteman says, and in the 1900s, uh, Whiteman says, and before, so Egypt is the same Egypt from thousands of years ago. Agreed. Uh, Mine is not the same Egypt. Uh, Whiteman says the same, but just a different ideology. And then Galina, Galania says Egypt's seen some crap. Uh, yeah, but it's not like it's a different place. You know, it's still Egypt, still called the same thing because it's a just place, so they can it's a move region. It, uh, put a, a wall through it. And the, to me, that's akin to blowing up a veteran's graveyard. I think Trump should have fired Fauci when he had the chance, as opposed to giving him the microphone, as opposed to what? Uh, around on the on the southern border of the of Arizona. He built a, the border wall went through a sacred Native American burial ground. They blew up a sacred Native American burial ground on the, on the southern border of, the, of Arizona just so they could move a, uh, put a, a wall through it. And to me, that's akin to blowing up a veteran's graveyard. I get that. Okay, so then why aren't you against Trump? He's like, Trump did some messed up stuff. He blew up a Native American burial ground. That's why Trump's a good guy. And it's like, no, stop. You just admitted why Trump was goofing. You just said, from my personal experience, I feel like that's as bad as blowing up a veteran's grave. Okay. So then why you like Trump? He did that. Authorized it. I think 
Trump should have fired Fauci when he had the chance, as opposed to giving him the microphone, as opposed to pushing vaccines and Operation Warp Speed as the greatest achievement of mankind. Um, and, and once again, and coming to your, your question, I think he could have and should have been there for more of the J6 people. Um, I think he should have been more outspoken. I, in all honesty, I honestly think he should have given all the nonviolent offenders a pardon, personally. But at the same time, I try to understand his reasoning for all that, you know, and I, I know that I don't know everything. And um, I have to respect and appreciate what it is that he has done for the... You're in jail, homie. You're in jail because you, I guess, thought that man had your back. He does not. And your ideology is not getting you anywhere. American people, even if I don't always agree with him or see eye to eye. Right. You know, one thing I think about January 6th in the media, it's very strange to me that people took you, and in the media, especially right-wing media, made it seem like you were some sort of crisis actor hired by Antifa to make... Ooh, that's interesting. I didn't know about that. So even his own news, his own people turned their back on him. The Fox News said, not us. Ooh. Uh, Ryan said, Egypt is a river and sand. Uh, Manu says, I'm in as a state, not culture or people. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying, everybody's talking about it in terms of a different thing, so it doesn't matter, you know. People look dumb. Oh, yeah, Disney Plus... Oh, yeah, y'all know it. Get ready. Okay. All I can say is... To make people look dumb. All I can say is, for part of me was like, that's hilarious, because anybody that really knows me knows that's not true. Another part of me is like, okay, this is a perfect example of how it is that the truth gets, gets smeared. You know, the, the, the fact of the matter is I'm not Antifa. I'm not Black Lives Matter. And the fact of the matter is when I was marching at the Black Lives Matter and the Antifa protests in Phoenix, I wasn't marching with them. I was marching with the police. I'm a perfect example of how they neurolinguistically program people through the use of images, through the use of trigger words, and through the use of trigger images. And as far as I'm concerned, you need to be the change that you want to see in the world. You need to be the one that's the leader. You know, I think that if every, imagine this, for example, we have a capital in every city, in every state, in every country all over the world. Imagine if every single person that was dedicated to the truth and to getting the truth out to the people met at their capital every single Saturday at noon. So this is our historical window of opportunity where, you know, where we can all gather together, you know, nonviolently at our local capitals where we can organize by default, we can change the dialogue, we can, you know, moralize by default. First off, there are plenty of governments which limit people's ability to free speech and people's ability to, uh, you know, congregate and to protest so there are plenty of places that would not have people showing up with you but the other thing is let's say you gather everybody at the capitals they meet every saturday at 12 noon what do you expect their governments to tell them all their governments are doing different things and they're all going to want answers to different questions that relate to their own personal lives and why they're suffering and the answers are going to be different for every country like it's not like they're all going to go you got us. We're all the vampire elites. Ugh. Guys, we didn't think everybody would get together. Like, what are you talking about? They're your people. They're people who were elected or appointed or whatever from the same population that you're in. They're, they're people who are human beings who are playing their roles in society that they feel like they need to to get along and succeed in whatever they're trying to do, just like you. They're making mistakes. They're doing crazy stuff, just like you. What do you think they're going to tell you other than, yeah, I wanted to make money and I wanted to, you know, further my own agenda. That's what I wanted to do. That's why the taxes went to what they went to. That's why I signed these deals and did these things for money. <clears throat> Ryan said, uh, ooh, um. Uh, uh, White Wind says, Egypt when its life flashes before its eyes, uh, Ryan says Egypt is a river in sand. Galenia, uh, Galania says, I've seen that Country Ball comic before. Have you seen our Country Ball video? Uh, we actually made one uh, called How to Micronation the Basics. Uh, if you want to go check that out, we have that available on our channel. 
Um, we put a lot of time and uh, effort into it too. We animated it and everything. It was cool. Um, Ryan says uh, some Trump supporters uh, are caught between not liking vaccines and trying to give Trump credit for the COVID vaccine program. Agreed. Uh, there's a lot of that going on right now. Um, Manu says if a country's government falls, its people don't just stop existing. Agreed. Uh, Galenius says true. Aiden says I have a question. If you are a dollar bill, what would it mean? If I am a dollar bill, what would it mean? Uh, it wouldn't mean anything. Uh, Manu says the ancient empire that was there in the Arab constitutional republic that is there today are not the same. Uh, agreed. Aiden says by if you are a dollar bill, I mean if you are inside a dollar bill. Uh, what would it mean? If I was inside a dollar bill, what would it mean? Uh, that I'm paper and cotton. Manu says I'd be microscopic, like Ant-Man. I would probably die from thirst. Aiden said, I also mean by if you imagine you is in a dollar bill. What do you mean? Like the letter U? Like the word Y-O-U? What do you mean? Me as an individual? Like if I was printed on a dollar bill? That would be cool. But uh, we have our own currency in attorney and I'm not printed on it. I could be, but there's not a good reason for it. Uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid says, hi, my new PFP on here. Uh, very cool. It's good to see you. Uh, we actually shouted out your, your stuff earlier on stream. Uh, so it's good to see you. Also, we have nine viewers. Please like the video. Please subscribe to us if you haven't already. We're watching Crazy Conspiracy Theory video uh, from the QAnon Shaman. Uh, crazy guy, uh, channel five. Uh, Manu says I'd protest it. Protest what? We can change our collective thought patterns by default. This this idea of every Saturday at noon at your local capital it organizes people by de by default. Also, also, why didn't y'all do that then? Why wasn't it peaceful? If everybody can just non-violently meet up at their capital and get it to work, why couldn't y'all be non-violent and just show up to your capital and just chill and just protest for what you want instead of hitting people and breaking into the capital and killing people? Not only that, but it would uh, it would take the stigma away from you know pulling up to the capital if we pulled up to the capital our own capitals every week just exactly. like hey we're here exactly and then that that way about the way oh go ahead that way you can't say hey they went to the capital they're terrorists you say they went to the capital that's what they're supposed to do that's what we always do <laughs> right and think about how what? that would change the collect andrew what are you talking about my guy you said some questionable sus right there you said some Ooh, what? You said some three question mark stuff right there, good sir. He he put his he head in his hands because he knows exactly uh, that didn't make any sense. Uh, White Wind says, "Oh, hold up, hold up." Uh, White Wind, be supportive of vaccines. Don't don't be an anti vaccine uh, vaccines are important and necessary. The stance of the Empire of Eternia is vaccines are important and necessary. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be an anti-vaxxer. It's not a good, not a good look. Uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, what? Yes, Tank, let me see what time stamp. Uh, Manu says, I'd protest their decision of putting an image of me on the dollar bill, especially if they chose a bad picture. That makes sense. Uh, Galania said loitering vibes. Yeah, you could. Uh, you could have total loitering vibes. That's different from breaking into the capital and killing people. Uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, I saw my thing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, we're, uh, we're happy to shout you out. It's good to see you. thought patterns. Now think about this. Imagine if, if, if uh, every second... What a dick. I'm curious if you put this guy on mute or not. He fucking just riled this man up. He said... As soon as he said, yeah, I agree, that man got so hype and so high. Andrew, you're such a dick, man. Oh, come on. Saturday at the Capitol at noon. He knows what he did. And they burned their vax cards or they burned their vaccine passports. Or they what? You're going to burn your va Stop. This is how people. This is why, White Wind, I don't want you to be an anti-vaxxer. 
it leads down the the rabbit hole so easy. First off, being an anti-vaxxer is a dangerous enough ideology on its own because you are risking the lives of other people when you don't take the vaccine. The other thing is that it's just like this. Then if you support anti-vaxxers, and a lot of anti-vaxxers also are QAnon people, it's not that you necessarily will become a QAnon person by being an anti-vaxxer, but if you are likely to get more radicalized, that is the pipeline you'll go through, is because those are the people who are saying, you're right, all of us QAnon people also hate the vaccine because it's a part of our our theory on it or whatever. It's so stupid. It's problematic because it's a way to then further justify that extreme radicalization and eventually like supporting like racist narratives and stuff. It's not saying that if you are an anti-vaxxer, you will become that, but it's a really easy pipeline to go down because there's support. You will find people who support what you believe in as an anti-vaxxer in that community, but that community is also a lot more extreme and a lot more racist and a lot more uh, problematic. So please try and back out of that ideology as quick as you can, as hard as you can, floor it in reverse, 180 that, because it's, it's only going to lead to worse things. That's, that's not a good look at all. It's really not. It's dangerous. They burned their masks, very similar to what, like, Gandhi did in South Africa with the passes that the Indians were forced to carry, but no British citizen was supposed to carry or forced to carry. Okay, imagine if everybody refused to socially distance, if everybody was praying or singing, dancing, and socializing, or basically going back to normal, if, if actually better than normal, because now we're all united, you know? Imagine if... My man say, you want my shoe? This, you know... This this interview's not going too far. You on my shoe? Maybe we'll make shoe content now. Sneaker game. Uh ooh. Uh multiple things. Uh White uh Ryan said uh at Whitewind uh slows what effect? Uh Whitewind says of COVID. Galania says this is how you raise your chance of getting sick by fifty percent. Oh, more than that. Yes, one hundred percent. If you're an anti vaxxer you are you are severely endangering yourself and everyone else. White one says, you seems, you quote, seem to get it later. It's just slowing the symptoms. It's going to be just as bad. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, that's not what you just said. White wind is not based on any scientific or medical evidence. All of the accepted medical evidence supports from around the world, from different independent sources, that are all like the legitimate sources of like governments and, you know, uh, you know, academic institutions all point toward the fact that people who are vaccinated are less likely to get sick at all. And if they are infected with COVID, they have sub significantly less symptoms uh, and are, ex you know, very unlikely to get hospitalized. Uh, whereas people who do not have the vaccine are far disproportionately more likely to get hospitalized because they're not inoculated. They have no defenses for uh, that for that virus. It's a problem. It's a way to help you to be able to fight the virus off with your own immune system before you w might get it. So it protects you. All of the evidence points to it protecting you. Nobody ever had problems with, you know, getting the flu shot. Nobody had problems with getting, you know, a smallpox shot or, you know, things like that. It's getting inoculated for other diseases. Polio vaccine. They're helpful. We created them for, we've had them for hundreds of years because they're helpful. We've known that this is like known medical science. Uh, Ryan says, as the pandemic gets extended, new variants can be resistant to previous treatments. How do the vaccines slow symptoms? Uh, great question, Ryan. Uh, Golania says, yeah, there are no pros of being an anti-vaxxer. For Pete's sake, just listen to the majority of the world. Agreed. Agreed, 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 agreed. Goodness. If Don't get radicalized, White Wind. We like you, man. Don't do it. Point energy engines. Look at people like Gandhi. Look at people like Martin Luther King Jr. and stuff like that. Even look at what happened in the USSR, where everybody gave the communists the finger and said, "We're not working for you. We're not working with you." And the USSR fell. 
Right. So I want to go back to something you talked about, and it's the idea of nonviolent rebellion. And uh, I'm of the belief that you are a truly nonviolent person. But with a lot of these, with with a lot of these large events, like large protests, large rallies, I think that there's going to be a lot of bad seeds that are, are in the mix. And that, that isn't referring to a specific event, just in general. You know? And I think that it becomes harder to police and expel violent people from your movement as tensions are high and numbers grow. You know, like if you go to a Trump rally, right, anywhere, Ooh. there is people there who are nonviolent, but there's also people who are just there to, you know, beat the shit out of the that opposition. That man had a noose. The man had a noose. That's the, that's the concerning thing. Nonviolent noose. And, Goodness. And, and, and just, just go there and use these, these movements as an outlet for their, their hatred. How do you feel about that? Well, this is something I think that is really important. Because we can use a certain event, I'll just say that, we can use a certain event that happened to um, learn, okay? If there's some sort of violence happening, do not contribute to it, back away from the violent person and allow authorities to handle it. Then you're not associated with the violence at all. I also think that things like prayer are very, very important at these at these places. I don't know if you know, but there was this uh, group that did um, like an experiment where in Washington D.C. they gathered together. I think it was like once a week um, for an hour, and they meditated and focused on the idea of nonviolence and peace and love and uh, the crime rates in Washington D.C. dropped by like 25 to 35 percent. Nonviolent rebellion is the only thing that has ever created some sort of long lasting change. Like what Gandhi said, dude, you know, violent. Agree. That's, that's the thing that's weird about this, right? Is that, like, this guy saying all this with no basis for it. Again, he's, he's just throwing things out as if he is telling you things that is, are factual. But there is no evidence to support what he's saying. Uh, there is nothing that is his, you know, his resource, his source for all this. Um, Manu says, the thing was intended to hang Mike Pence. Yeah, it's really concerning to see these people, you know. Uh, Ryan says, consider that there is nuance to the levels and reasons for skepticism to COVID vaccines. There isn't sufficient differentiation in terminology of these new positions uh, to pre-pandemic anti-vax positions. Uh, Ryan says, uh, Manu says for betraying Trump, uh, Ryan says politics was always a huge dumpster fire though, but even still, no matter how much nuance, you know, to the levels of reasoning and skepticism, uh, to COVID vaccines are, it's still ultimately an anti-vax position. Like the, the new, you know, vaccines, the new treatments and stuff that are coming out are still like. They're still helpful, you know, there are still ones that are always going to be things that people are just making up and people are supporting uh, that are, like, debunkable and that are, like, not legitimately supported medical advice, like, you know, people taking horse dewormer and things like that. Um, but the there are more legitimate treatments coming out. There are uh, better ways for us to uh, fight off COVID to help people who get COVID uh, to fight it off more easily, especially those with weakened immune systems. So all these things are going out, but ultimately they're to help us. I, I don't understand why, because a lot of the time the vaccine anti-vax stuff ties into like this conspiracy theory stuff where people's reasoning for it is, oh, well, that's the way that the government gets you is with the vaccine. And it's like, but gets what? Your data, they already have it. You know, you're, what what thing can they take from you by protecting your life with a vaccine? As well, uh, the U.S. has always fought back against like socialized medicine and things like that. Uh, this uh, vaccine uh, campaign, Operation Warp Speed or whatever, uh, 
is one of the the largest like socialized medicine events in U.S. history. Uh, serious, serious, uh, important event, and people are shitting on it. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know. It's it's concerning to me. Um, a victory attained by violence is tantamount to a feat. For sure. Do you have any regrets? Dude, when you're sitting in a cell for 22 hours a day, you have all sorts of regrets, far beyond the ones that landed you in that cell. Okay, you think about everything you've ever done in your life that you're like, man, I screwed up there, I screwed up there, I screwed up there, I messed up here, I wish I would have said that, I wish I would have done that, I wish I would have kissed her, I wish I would have shown up, I wish I would have done this, I wish, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you pick yourself apart like no other. I don't know if it's anybody else or just me, but this like knot in his headphones is getting me so bad. I, I have tangled up headphones, as you can see. They are not as bad as his. His is like in a tight knot that makes me concerned. I feel like that headphone, if it's not broken, it's on its way. Like it, it's holding on to its last little bit there. It, that thing's got to be damaged or like getting damaged pretty, pretty hard. But the thing is, is that after all this time in solitary, you know, they did it to break me. But what it did is, is it made me all this. Oh, yeah. So he was put in solitary confinement. And it sounds like you're still crazy. Like, I, I don't know. All they do, they did it to break me. But now I feel even better. It's like, oh, no. Pressure, the FBI on, down my, breathing down my neck, the DOJ prosecuting me, the media spewing their lies, my previous counsel totally abhorrently misrepresenting me, saying I'm retarded and, you know, delusional and schizophrenic and all this stuff. All the while, I'm in solitary confinement. I can't do anything about it. I can't express myself. I can't talk to the press. You know, the, 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 the pressure. Man, they're trying to help you. They're trying to help you get out of prison. Say what you need to do to get out of prison is what I would do, but okay. That's you, man. I, oh gosh. So concerning. This guy, it it definitely feels like a, uh, like a main character syndrome sort of thing where like he's saying, oh, I hate this. I hate that I'm in jail. I hate, which I'm sure everybody hates being in jail, but he's like, I, I got the FBI breathing down my neck. I got the DOJ. I got the media spreading their lie. You know, it it sounds like a, it sounds like Trump talking points. And more so than that, it sounds like it's the martyrs, like you know, cry for help. It, it's this, it's this seeming like weird attached to ego thing, where it's like he's saying it sucks and he's saying how terrible it is, but it also seems like he's living out a fantasy. You know where the Department of Justice is after him, where the FBI are after him, and all these things. Yeah, they, they are, but they got you, dude. It's not like they're still after you. They're just, they got you. Like, yeah, they put you in jail. They prosecuted you. They did what they needed to do. All they're doing is letting you serve out your prison sentence now, man. Like, I, I just, it, it seems like he's, he's like feeling like this is all a part of the plan, like all a part of his destiny or whatever. And that's the thing that really creeps me out about this. And that's why, again, I'm really concerned about like the micronational community and about people having these like extremist viewpoints where it's not too hard for somebody to slip down a rabbit hole and just become hardcore and extremist. And we do not want that. Um, Galania says, yeah, there are no pros being anti-vaxxer. Uh, bad seeds are already in the mix. They have been since politics started to become a huge dumpster fire. Um, Ryan says, violence uh, has often been effective at political change. Lots of people overinflate the effectiveness of nonviolent protest, uh, especially when the violence in the movement for Indian independence and uh, black civil rights is ignored. Uh, agreed. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think people should be advocating violence. Uh, the Republic of Rockhouse says, hello, hello, uh, Rockhouse. Uh, Rich says, you right, though. Ryan says, such emphasis on nonviolent protests is easy to deploy by the regimes to protect violent uh, status quo. Uh, sure, Ryan, but are you the one advocating violent change? Like, are you going to be going out there on your own to commit this violence? Don't. Don't. It's not a good move. Uh, Golania says, I am confused as to how... Uh, the White House hasn't been destroyed. It's been vandalized uh, 
not only by the 1812 war, but in uh, six, uh, 1621 insurrection. Uh, there may be others, I don't know. Uh, no, so that insurrection wasn't at the White House. That was at the uh, Capitol building, which they broke into. Uh, the War of 1812, the White House was burned down, I believe. Um, you know, just straight up burned down, like completely destroyed and then had to be rebuilt. So uh, this is not the same White House from that White House, which was burned down. Um, and as well, uh, during uh, January 6th, uh, the White House wasn't attacked. Uh, it was the Capitol building. Um Ryan says, uh, militant nonviolent is also disruptive and unpopular and is difficult. Uh, those who casually appeal to nonviolent protest often oppose the disruptive tactics that made those few successes successful. Yes, but they are also those few successes. It's kind of like saying, hey, there have been some successful bank robberies, but a lot of the time, uh, people are always focusing on the, you know, the non-successful bank robberies such that they don't give credit to the successful ones. They're just like, sure, but I'm also not going to be the one that risks robbing a bank in order to hope that I'm the one that works out and, that, you know, gets away with the bank robbery. Uh, nobody wants to be that person unless you feel like the risk is great enough. And even then, it's like a concerning thing that you would be pushed to that extreme. It's generally nobody's first choice. Uh, not even there, you know, it's, it's generally last, 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 last on everybody's list. Um, homegrown gainer kids and me casually listens to sensory overload. Uh, Ryan says the white house was set on fire and burned initially in 1812, but wasn't totally destroyed. Makes sense. Still it needed to be rebuilt. Homegrown gamer kid says, hi, Ryan. Uh, Hey, what's up Onyx? Let me see. It was unbelievable, but it, it turned me into what David Goggins calls uh, anti-fragile or, or a, almost like a spiritual diamond of sorts where all that pressure didn't break me. It made Gross. me a better, stronger, more uh, spiritual. That zoom person. in on his fucking face, bro. What? How do you think that you'll be remembered by history? With an ad break? Oh, Wow. Oh, wow, it's the ad break. Oh, okay, let me pause that. Let me unmute. Well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> right. So what's the, what's the plan? What comes next? Like, do you have any plans for whenever you get out? Oh, yeah. I'm going to write an autobiography. Um, I'm, uh, I'd like to make movies. I'd like to make music. I want to make more some more of my paintings. We should make music, dude. Oh, dude, I'm down. Dude, we should make a first sure. first day out first day out video. It's like in rap whenever rappers get out of jail. Not that you have to rap, but they do a first day out freestyle. You should do something like that, but it's like you drop a music video your first day out of the, out of prison. That would be cool. It would, go yeah, crazy. I, it would go crazy. That would be awesome, dude. I'd totally do it, bro, and I'd I'd work with whoever could help me with that, you know. We will help you with that. Um, I also want to start my own church. Yeah. Go, go, going back to the music thing, do you know? <laughs> excuse me. Ah. Ah, excuse me. My man said, I also want to start my own church. Going back to the music. I don't care about that shit. Going back to the music, please. I had a freestyle rap at all. I'm a, I'm a poet. I'm not a rapper. I could probably learn to rap, but I'm 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 much better when it comes to singing than rapping. Do you think you could sing something for us? Whoa! <laughs> yeah, oh, that is insane. Do, yeah, dude, I can get so freaking loud, bro. I can get. Why is that the metric for music, bro? I can be loud. I can be so loud. <laughs> Can you sing something? Bro, I can be loud. <laughs> That's crazy. Who thinks that? Hey, can you can you play Oh gosh. Can you play uh the flute? I, yeah, man. As loud as you want. And it's like, what? No, but can you play it well? I can play it as loud as you want. My man said, Oh my man said deep groan. Mari says his own church, uh, multiple things. Uh, Galanius says another group that I feel 
isn't talked about is autism. I just don't feel good with a hate organization being in here. Uh, uh, autism speak does not uh, speak for autistics. Uh, agreed. Uh, Ryan says autism speak sucks. Uh, Manu says his own church. Uh, where'd that come from? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, he just threw that shit in there. He just said, yep, I'm a cult leader as well. We're getting into that. Uh, uh, Ryan says roars in the mic. Yeah, we did it. We can do it together, Ryan. You want to sing? You want to be loud? We can be loud together. Ryan, uh, Manu says, I can't. I can't with this guy. <laughs> Merch, I said lion impersonation. My man said, he wants me to sing. What do I bust out? Some Frank Sinatra, some Celine Dion. I'll hit him with a classic. Ugh! Just the, the guttural yell. That, that's the that's the hope. Also, sorry if, to the headphone users. I know I killed somebody. Uh, going to jail for uh, manslaughter. Uh, internet manslaughter. Galania says, I've always wanted to cre- uh, want to created every creative thing in existence as well. Not churches. I'm Christian. Yeah, because that's something that people generally <laughs> keep pretty sacred, right? Like, yeah, you can be creative. You can be as creative as you want to be. Just commit to the things that you want to commit to you probably shouldn't just decide you're the person to create a religion i don't know about that um homegrown gamer kid says yowls into mic so loud everyone's ears shatters i'm sorry uh manu says he's the wrong kind of chill you mean negative chill ryan says instead of hymns at church they just roar together yes he's got a good church he's got a good cult going I I love it. You scream uh, when someone tells you to sing. If someone asks how good a singer you are, it's not based on, like, your skill or, like, your pitch. It's based on how loud you are. Their entire, like, they have a choir, but it's all based on people who are just loud. They're all just very loud people. Uh, Not even when they're singing, just talking very loud. Uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, O.W., uh... Oh, Al, sorry. Uh, Rich says, uh, chilled to the bone. My ears, that yeeted me. I'm sorry. Uh, Ryan said, creatively create a new religion. L. Ron Hubbard did it. You're right. Hey, if you could go from sci-fi books to cult, you could do anything. Tom Cruise will back you. Yes, so loud, you have no idea. Did, did you just freak anybody out in your pod? I don't know, probably. Dude, dude, I can, I can. Everybody else in prison is like, stop. Stop screaming. Chill, chill, dude. He he scares everybody uh, in prison. Not because he's like a real intimidating guy, but just because he's weird and nobody wants to fuck with him. Like, like he he just goes up and just talks to people, and he's like, "You want to hear how good I can sing?" Uh, I'm like, stop, stop. What are you doing? Get away from me, man. And he's like, "All right, just check out my new religion on SoundCloud." Uh, <laughs> they're like, "Chill, chill, dude. Leave us alone. We just want to." Eat our breakfast in peace, please. I can go for miles. I want to sit in the cell 25 hours a day just so I don't have to listen to this guy. If I'm, if I'm in the right spot, you can hear me for miles. I can't believe your lawyer said... Why, does he, why is he so fixated on the loudness of it? He, that guy's like, wow, that was incredible. That was a, you, you really sung it there. And he's like, yeah, dude, I'm so loud. You can hear me for miles, like straight up. Like I could scream so loud that aliens hear it. And that's how I got contacted on all this. One time I was in a uh, psychic trance from taking all these hallucinogens. And I screamed so loud that the aliens contacted me. And then it it transformed my understanding, which is why I'm queuing on so far. This guy is tripping so hard said you were retarded that's so whack yeah the man said that's so whack <laughs> oh. did, did you just freak anybody out in your pod i don't know probably dude dude i can i can i can go for miles if i'm if i'm in the right spot you can hear me for miles i can't believe your lawyer said you were retarded that's so whack yeah, it's it's it, to say the least. He abhorrently misrepresented me and was extremely inaccurate. But you know, I think as people listen to me speak, they begin to see the truth is quite the opposite. So that's why. I'm- I think probably listening to you speak is what made them go. 
we can get this guy off. We can get him off if we just say he's absolutely off the wall, man. This guy cannot possibly function normally in society. You expected this guy, this guy to be good? Nah, man, he need, he needs something. I encourage people, you know, to uh, do their own research because that's really the only way. I mean, like, seriously, if all people would have had to do to know the truth about me and who I really am, that I'm not a deep state actor, that I'm, you know, not... Only thing this man has said that's even slightly reasonable is do your own research, but don't do it like him where you just go down conspiracy theory rabbit holes and you just attach whatever it is that supports your position as your beliefs. Do your own research and legitimately understand peer-reviewed articles, understand the consensus from academic communities. People have been researching these things their entire lives, especially when it disagrees with you and your stance. It's a whole thing mentally ill that you know uh that i had nothing to do with blm or antifa all they would have to do is would have had to go to my rumble go to my bit shoot and read my book right so what media outlets do you trust oh dude i don't really i i, I search so many media outlets i search so many sources before i ever come to a conclusion about anything but look i, I want to keep talking to you but um unfortunately i do have to go um, I got to give my family a call because of the holiday and such. But um, if you want, we can do another interview, bro. I can always call you back. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. So uh, I was wondering, like, I have this friend named Kelly who I was telling you about who we're making a documentary on. And, uh, uh -huh. yeah, I kind of want you to meet him. Okay, cool. Yeah, then yeah, then we'll definitely work it out. We'll definitely do something, man. Thanks, Channel 5, for having me on, man. And I hope to be on once again. It's been a, a pleasure, like, beyond... But it's been before, you know, I, the, the questions you asked were fan frick fantastic and I hope to do this again. Thank you so much, Andrew, and, you know, God bless you, and God bless America, and God bless the world. Yeah, God bless you too, man. Let's keep in touch. Anytime you call, I'll answer. Yes, sir. God bless, man. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Sounds good, man. Bye-bye. All right. Damn, bro. Smart. That's crazy. Hey, y'all want some batteries? Y'all trying to get some batteries? Y'all trying to watch Toilet Humor Never Before Seen Cold Open? Ah, uh, wow. Wow, we learned some stuff today. We were educated, weren't we? Ooh, Brandon joined in. Hey, it's good to see you, Brandon. Brandon said, my research, Wikipedia. Brandon, sometimes, sometimes Wikipedia is legitimately, like Wikipedia is supported by a lot of people uh, who legitimately, not a lot of people, supported by a few people, some of who are very like avid researchers of things and who really go out of their way to make Wikipedia like legitimate. And then there are some people who absolutely trash Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is kind of on the fence, but I, I get you. Um... Brandis, it sounds pretty groovy. You know it. Um, Homegrown Gamer Kids and Emperor AP. Uh, I'm going to make a funny moment and a potential micronation in a nutshell video. Very cool. Uh, Galania says, dude, 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 hear my roar. Screams that do not come from Earth whatsoever. You know it. Uh, Galania says, they're grooving. Uh, Manu says, all praise our Lord and Savior, a 4chan user. Oh, no. Brandon says, my research Wikipedia. Uh, Homegirl says, be pro. Ronnie says, it's impossible that this kind of person exists. Uh, I, I see it. I just wish he would have taken the... He, if he was smart on his legal stuff, he should have let those people say that he was not mentally fit to be in prison. They could have gotten him out. They might have gotten him out, you know? It, it was probably his best shot, and that lawyer probably knew what he was doing, or she was doing, and straight up, uh, he goofed. He he took solid legal advice and threw it out the window. Uh, Galania says he sounds like he's from Texas. Uh, I don't know where he's from. We do. We can look up where that guy is. Manu says he laughed at your face and now you're thanking him. Agreed. It it was interesting. The the Channel Five guy Andrew did like laugh at him, like in the interview, like laughed really hard at him. That's cool, but I don't know. I don't know if he's seen the cut of it yet or, you know, how that's going to work out. Let me see.
Uh, Q Shaman Birthplace. Where's this guy from? Jake Angeli, known as the QAnon Shaman and Yellowstone Wolf, is an American activist and conspiracy theorist who participated in the 2021 uh, United States Capitol attack. That's what it's called. 2021 United States uh, Capitol attack. And was later convicted for his actions on that day. He has been a supporter. So his, his court has actually owned that. He has been a supporter of ex-president Donald Trump and a proponent of the QAnon conspiracy theory. And Jelly attended demonstrations in the Phoenix area from around 2019. Phoenix. He's from Arizona. Uh, at rallies, he promoted conspiracy theories supporting Trump, supporting the environment, and has been a counter-protester at Black Lives Matter BLM events. Gross. Uh, he's a counter-protester against the civil rights movement. After being photographed taking part in the storming of the Capitol, Angeliki was arrested on January 9th on federal charges of knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority and with violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. He pleaded guilty to a single charge in September 2021 and was sentenced to 41 months in prison in November 2021. Yeah, so he's saying like his sentence was really bad and really extreme or whatever. I don't know, man. You violently entered federal property and, you know, like stayed there when you weren't supposed to. Uh, there were other people who like murdered people. Like I'm sure they have much stronger charges that they were caught. Uh, I I would I would count your blessings on that, man. Early life and education. Jake Angeli was born on July first, nineteen eighty-seven, to Martha Chansley. He attended Moon Valley High School in Phoenix, Arizona, and Glendale Community College, where he completed some coursework in psychology, religion, philosophy, and ceramics. Uh, my boy knows pottery. Angeli enlisted in the United States Navy on September twenty-six, two thousand five. Uh, so he's a, he's a veteran. After boot camp and training as a supply clerk, he, uh, clerk, he was assigned to the aircraft carrier USS Kitty Hawk uh, in March 2006. At some point, he refused to take an anthrax vaccine and was scheduled for dismissal from the Navy. Yeah, he didn't want an anthrax vaccine. Goodness. On September 29, 2007, uh, he was sent to a transit... So he... he was removed from the military. He was dishonorably discharged because he did not take uh, a vaccine. He was an anti-vaxxer in the military, 2005. 2007, he was sent to a transient personnel unit in Puget Sound in Washington State and was processed out of the Navy on October 11th. After two years and 15 days in uniform, his final rank was storekeeper, seaman, apprentice. Uh, his military awards and decorations include the National Defense Service Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, the Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, and the Navy and Marine Corps Overseas Service Ribbon. Uh, Angeli self-published two books, Will and Power, Inside the Living Library, Volume 1, published in 2017 under the pen name Lone Wolf, and One Mind at a Time, A Deep State Illusion, published in 2020 under the name Jacob Angeli. He produced and narrated 11 videos espousing various conspiracy theories and uploaded them to the platform Rumble in late 2020. Engeli has a profile on the backstage website uh, seeking work as an actor. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so conspiracy theorist, uh, author, guy who took ceramics in college, uh, among other things. Interesting, interesting guy. Very concerning. Um... Let me let me hit up the chat. Let me hit up the comments. I know everybody is hyped to talk about this. Um, so uh, Galenia, uh, he's not from Texas. He's from Arizona, but not too far. Not too far away. Manu said uh, he laughed at your face. Um, Homegrown says anyone hyped for revengeance? Uh, me making pro Five Nights at Freddy mod. Uh, Matt jumped in. Hey Matt, it's good to see you. Saying 4chan has different opinions on this. I doubt a 4chan user. Fair enough. Manu says, AP, I think you skipped a bunch of comments. I'm sure I did. Manu, which ones did I skip? Um, Drew says, ah, I had to switch account. Forgot I was on Matt. Hey, Drew, it's good to see you. Drew's hanging out. Uh, Rich says, oh, hey, Drew. Uh, Galania says, Micronations in a nutshell does sound like a very awesome YouTube video. Uh, Rich says, Eternia made one uh, called that a while ago. It's... Uh, a good one if you're starting out. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
Uh, homegrown gamer kid says it's gonna have a similar layout to my Roblox in a nutshell. Then, uh, Galanius says, "Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, definitely make sure to go check out the video if you haven't. Uh, like I said, our most recent one on Micronations was the How to Micronation the Basics video, uh, which right now has uh, 337 views. Let me double check to see what the views on it are. I think it's probably still around there. Uh, 337 mark." Uh, 338. Hey, one more person watched the video. Thank you guys. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go check that out, that means a lot. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, I love the thumbnail. Again, we did a lot of cool work on it. Uh, it took a long time to make, so I appreciate you guys supporting it. Uh, as well, we just came out with videos on our economy, like our at-home metal factory, uh, that shows you guys kind of a step-by-step -step of how we uh, have gone through the process of creating this metal factory, and uh, training uh, David, our blacksmith, who's running that. So now we've effectively doubled uh, our output for uh, our metal refining industry. Uh, let me go ahead and look at monetization as well, because now we're at 3521 public watch time hours. We're so close. That that little bar, that little blue bar right there is so close. Uh, and I could feel it. Uh, we need to just tip over the edge a little bit. Uh, less than... 480 479 watch time hours left to go we got this guys um also with three hours you know seven viewers we're we're getting it um brandon says a shame since he was sounding kind of based uh interesting uh homegrown says fnf is five night uh friday night funkin mod oh what is that uh manu says uh go to somewhere after i said uh, he's the wrong kind of chill. Oh gosh, that sounds like far up. He's the wrong kind of chill. Oh no, is it above the Egypt stuff? I feel like no. Uh, black civil rights is ignored. Talking about that. Um, I can't with this guy. He's the wrong kind of chill. There we go. Okay, so uh, you were saying that you can't with this guy. You asked where'd he, where'd it come from. Um, he's Rich said he was chilled to the bone. Homegrown said my ears that yeeted me. Creatively create a new religion. Yep, we did all that. Uh, we talked about the dude here, my roar. We talked about him make a funny moment in the Micronations in a nutshell stream. Yeah, I think we got all that. Yeah, uh, it's impossible this kind of person exists. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, agreed. Uh, again, he's he's like weird, but it, I, I get that he does exist. Uh, he laughed at your face. Yeah, yeah, I've got your stuff, Manu. Uh, if there was something else I missed, let me know. But I, I think it. I, I think it was pretty good. Um... Galania says, we did boost you a little in the watch views thing. Hey, that means a lot. Thank you. Uh, and every time you can support us, every time you can tell another person about us, every time you can uh, share our videos, anything like that, you're helping us a ton. So thank you guys for real on that front. Uh, it means a lot. Um, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, oh, it's a rhythm game. That sounds cool. Uh, how is it? Uh, Brandon says, also that blacksmithing is very impressive, not going to lie. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, you know, people always talk to us and ask us, you know, uh, is Eternia a real country? Is Eternia doing stuff seriously to try and grow its nation? What's Eternia doing? Why are you guys talking so much about starting a nation? We are actively developing our industries. We are actively growing and improving the lives and the assets uh, that our citizens benefit from. Uh, we're always trying to improve the quality of life of our citizens, and we're trying to do so uh, through economic means. Uh, we're trying to make our citizenship every year become something that is more and more valuable. That means it's harder and harder to get every year, but for the people who invest in it early and maintain it, uh, that initial benefit, uh, that initial citizenship that they get uh, has more and more benefits every year that you know increases in value for them. So uh, thank you guys for helping us to get to this point. And I can't wait to keep pushing us farther beyond. Uh, as you guys can see from that video and from other stuff we've done, we have now a good bit of copper, uh, which we are, you know, we have some pieces going out and starting to be created. So I just want to kind of show that off a little bit, show what you guys uh, have helped to make, have helped to create. So, uh, you know, in, in your support of us, we have been able to make a lot of cool stuff thanks to you guys. 
Um, uh, Brandon said also that blacksmithing is very impressive. Manu says, I think it was just my imagination. I get you, but still, uh, like, I'm glad we were able to go back and look and figure it out. Uh, Homegrown says, Emperor AP, have you heard of Gilded? It's kind of like Discord, but uh, more features. Yes, it's 100% free. Oh, that sounds cool. I feel like part of the reason we're on Discord is just because it's used by so many people. Um, we may jump on other social media and stuff, but right now we're just trying to balance what we have. Uh, we even got on like TikTok and stuff now. I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, uh, but we're on TikTok now. Uh, and I've been trying to do more stuff with it, but I haven't been able to put out enough. I, I've been trying to maintain what we have on the social media we have right now. Uh, Brandon says, which is wonderful that you guys are improving quality of life and economics. Legitimacy and statehood comes with exactly what you're doing. Thank you very much, Brandon. It means a lot. Uh, and if you want to join us, uh, we have uh, the ability, you know, uh, citizenship is fairly easy to get. Uh, if you uh, want to either one, uh, support us with a dollar a month tax. Uh, it's on our Patreon. If you uh, support our lowest uh, tier on our Patreon, our one dollar a month, you can get uh, you can get a citizenship, uh, and you know, that's kind of all you need to do is to pay the tax. Um, if you don't have the money to pay the tax or don't want to, uh, there are always ways that you can just help us by providing, you know, some benefit to the empire of Eternia that can get you citizenship as well. So you don't need to give money in order to be a citizen. Um, and all that, uh, takes is an application. There's free application on our website, uh, to become a citizen, uh, at, EternianEmpire.wixsite.com backslash Imperial Market. Uh, if you type in the Empire of Eternia, you should find it. Uh, but yeah, guys, please join our Discord, hang out with us, uh, teach us about what you're interested in and about why you want to create a micronation. A lot of people talk to us and say, I want to develop my own micronation, I want to do this or that. That's why we have videos out there talking about, you know, you should join a micronation before you create your own. You should, you know, try to support other micronations because there are so many of us out there trying to do our own thing when really a lot of what we all want to do can be accomplished under the same flag and, and um, people have a lot more similarities than they realize in that so I think the more powerful micronations will become uh, more, micronations will become more fa more powerful and have a quicker growth quicker acceleration once people are able to start coming together under uh, one micronation. You know, not saying that all micronations need to come together under one micronation. Of course, people have enough differences in their ideology that they're not all going to want to be under the same government. Otherwise, we wouldn't be creating micronations in the first place. But uh, that being the case, you know, a few micronations can kind of cover a wide span of the political spectrum. We don't need hundreds and hundreds of micronations like there are. You know, if there's maybe a dozen successful micronations, that's enough to give a lot of economic and political differences uh, and, and ways of life for people to choose from. Uh, but supporting those and actually helping to make these alternatives, these micronations more successful, allows us to have greater effects in the macronational sphere and allows us to further these independence movements by leaps and bounds versus everybody having their own independence movement and all struggling independently and taking resources from each other, which are severely limited. Galania says, uh, fun fact, Eternia kind of uh, back peeled Galania to develop. Um, I I'm curious as to what you mean, uh, Galania. Uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, oh, and for some reason you can use Discord templates and Gilded. Uh, I'm glad we helped you, if we did help you, Galenia. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's what we want to do, is we want to help people to grow, and we want to help people to learn about what we're doing, but ultimately we want people to support uh, the movements that already exist, instead of trying to create another one, because most of the time you realize that a lot of the things that people are, you know, trying to create new movements on, are the same things that other movements are already uh, fighting for. So I want to go through and look at uh, some of our uh, some of our content from Twitter. Twitter is always a place to start beef, but uh, one thing the Cal Exit campaign. If you guys didn't watch our previous stream on Cal Exit and me reviewing the stuff that happened in Cal Exit, Cal Exit basically fell apart. California independence movement just kind of. You know, fell apart. I did a whole video on that. Uh, you know, it, it's been silly. Uh, but yeah, the the guy Louis Marinelli 
uh, has now like completely 180 flipped his political opinions uh, and is just shitting on everybody that he used to support. So, gross. Uh, people are always shitting on him too, constantly. They're, they're constantly posting uh, comments on his stuff, shitting on him. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's no comments on that one. There's one comment on that, but it, apparently I can't see it. Uh, show more replies. Ties to... Okay. Let's just look at the Cal Exit Twitter and let's, let's watch the beef. An important message about Cal Exit. And that's where this whole thing goes in. We, we've already reviewed this on another stream before. But yeah, it's basically people saying like, Yep, uh, you stepped down from Cal Exit and you don't... Uh, deserve to become be a legitimate you know figurehead in it anymore there, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with that uh carnia ruthenia so studies are being carried out to make author is author alterations to the carno ruthenian nobility it's the first time since 2016 the changes of this kind have taken place the reason is the recent union with delvera and Assidia. interesting so carnia ruthenia is now like a union with Delvera and Ossidia. I've heard of Delvera before. We have their flag. Carnia Ruthenia. We're following on Twitter. Well, I guess we're following because Health of Mistress liked them, which is somebody we follow on Twitter. Uh, yeah, but I've heard of them before. Um, so they're changing their whole government structure because of a you know union with Delver, are they now like one government that's trying to run all those different people's lives or what? Uh, I'm curious. Um, ooh, um, Brandon says I was always wondering how did you manage to grasp economics and citizen involvement? My old movement of Matachawan failed due to its citizens losing inter interest. How do you avoid this? Uh, it's very hard, and the short answer is. Uh, you have to have a legitimate movement. A lot of people create micronations because they want to create their own country. That's not why I created a micronation. I created a micronation to find a home for myself and my people, my family, uh, the people who I have seen, like literally my blood family, who I have seen struggle economically and suffer in the United States, uh, friends that I have seen suffer in the United States, uh, myself who I have you know, face certain difficulties in my own life that I felt were just not reasonable. There, I, I've seen a lot of the, the problems that the current uh, life in the U.S. creates for people that's unnecessary. And so I want to offer an alternative and I have a specific path laid out for how to do that. Uh, the only reason that I'm able to keep support and grow support is because I can prove to people, this is my plan, this is how we're going to make it work, and then I go through and make sure that happens. And I make sure to have that pay off for people and to grow year after year after year after year. It's a very hard thing to do and not everybody should do it because there is a part to play for everybody in every civilization. There are plenty of parts, even in Eternia, that are not filled and that need smart, capable people to fill them, but it's hard to find those smart, capable people to fill them in every micronation because all of the people who are already really smart and gifted in creating micronations and developing them already have their own. So they're like, oh, we need other people to come into our micronation to help make our micronation better, but all the people who are interested in micronationalism are already creating their own countries. It's a huge problem and it's one that is ridiculous. If you are interested in micronationalism and truly believe that you want to see a micronation develop and become its own sovereign entity, recognized sovereign nation, you have to support the other larger macronational movements out there instead of creating your own. Uh, I, I recommend joining another micronation instead of creating your own. That is how you prevent that. If you feel uh, it, it's this idea of support, right? If you feel dedicated enough to a cause to then give up your own cause and to join that one, then you are a great candidate to explain to people why they should do the same, why it is so worth putting your time and effort into that society that you are helping to build. They will feel more invested by that. 
But if you say, I did the, you know, join me because I wanted to create a nation and this is why I'm doing it because I feel like it's so important, but you can't get other people to give up what they're doing and say, no, this is important. This is the right way to go. If you can't make that sacrifice, then other people don't want to make that sacrifice for you. Uh, you have to be able to give up sometimes uh, saying, I need the power and I need the control to be able to achieve larger goals for the greater good of the society you're building. It's hard. It's hard, hard, hard to, to accept that. But that is something that many people in the micronational community need to understand and accept. Uh, working together will put you a lot farther ahead than if you try to run everything yourself. Um, ooh, uh, Drew said, anyone heard of the people whose religions had to claim, uh, had a claim to beer to will and held it, haven't been on Twitter much? Uh, ooh, I haven't seen that, but I'm curious. I want to look it up. Ryan says, corporate mergers be like, you know it, right? Uh, that is true. I'm curious about that because they are like, because we're merging with Delvera and Asidia, now our like whole thing is different. We're like rewriting our entire uh, means of uh, nobility. And so what I'm curious about is, did these other nations, Delvera and Afsidia, say, okay, we are going to bend to Carnia Ruthenian authority, we're going to become a part of Carnia Ruthenia, only under the circumstances that the Carnia Ruthenia change the way that their nobility works such that we can become more in power and we feel more equal to the original Carno Ruthenians. Um, or did they say, okay, now we're all this like equal democracy, so we need to get rid of the monarchy in general, which I'd be surprised based on the, you know, cultural precedent that it seems like it sets in their country. Anyway, uh, Homegrown Gamer Kid said, Beer to Will, the place between Egypt and Sudan. Yep. Galania said, yeah, it's probably our last ditch attempt at getting a nation peacefully. Uh, why do you, why do you say that? I disagree with that really hard. Uh, Drew says, also helps if you say you're a good community and be great all around for gaming uh, or chatting. Gamed 30 plus just because of that before Eternia. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate that. That's very true as well. Drew, Drew's given out solid advice. Um, you also, in addition to having other people support your community, it's nice to just have a good community, to just know how to like gather support and to be a friendly person, to be someone who's legitimately interested in helping and assisting other people. It, if you are good at leadership or not, really is going to be seen by how many people stick around and by how many people support your thing. If people stop supporting your thing, you can't just be like, oh, it's this crazy, hard, difficult thing to get people to support it, which it is. But it shows that you're not meeting things that they need in their life. It's, it's like a business, you know. If you're not getting any customers, it means that you are not meeting a need that is there, you know. Or it's so difficult to get the thing that you are trying to provide that it's not worth it. Um, Brandon says, thanks for the enlightenment. Definitely something to think about and look back on my own previous political mistakes and concepts. Uh agree i think the biggest political mistake and concept is not supporting another micronation you should go and support another micronation because a lot of people do that they'll come in the chat and they'll be like and i'm not saying attorney go and support some other micronation if that's what you want but people come in the chat all the time and they're like hey how do i how do i improve my micronation how do i make it better and then i'm like Join another micronation. That's what you need to do. That's how you make it better. That's how you grow the country. That's how you show support for legitimately positive ideas and how you make the biggest impact. And then they go, thanks. Uh, I took a little bit of what you said, and now I'm going to go recreate another nation in the hopes that that makes it better. And I'm like, oh, you're going to fail for the same exact reasons. And then they go, oh, I tried it, and we're doing stuff. And then a year later, now we're starting to fail, and it's not working out. Uh, can you give me some more advice on how to help my nation? You should join another nation because that's this was important. You should try to promote ideas that you feel like are important over an individual nation. Oh, uh, yeah, so I didn't do that, but uh, now my nation's failing again. I don't know why. We tried it. You saw when it was getting started. You you gave us advice. Help us out. It's like, oh, you should. It's not. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Uh, please, please, please. Uh, anybody, anybody who wants advice on their micronation developing. Join another one. 
join another micronation. It's most important. Uh, if you support a pol specific political concept, if you are trying to improve the quality of life of other people on the earth, you should give your support toward those larger political movements rather than trying to start your own from the ground every single time because it's just taking away money and resources that can be used to achieve those larger goals. Drew says, I love the Southern Roll Tide just at the bottom tweet. Uh, yep, uh, straight, up, straight up Capital One out here giving that Alabama look. Um... Uh, Drew, very, very perceptive there. Galania says, a nation won't like rebels and will probably start a civil war. I have doubts that there's a nation that won't get petty, mad, pretty mad at the idea of a breakaway. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't secede. That's another thing we've talked about as well. Don't secede from country. You know, micronationalists a lot of the time will become secessionists, and I don't like that either. The concept that you're going to grab a hold of a piece of land, and then you're going to say, now this is mine, and no one can take it from me, even though it was already before you, like generations before you, was already a part of another country. Unless you have a historical claim for why that, uh, that specific area should not be considered a part of you know, the country that it is considered a part of, you in your life have very little, if any, justification to be able to take land that was already from another country and already a part of another country away from the people of that country. It's theirs more than it is yours. Uh, there's a larger population of them than there are you. Uh, so you're very unlikely to get every single person within a specific territory to agree that that territory should be removed from uh, their country. And if you aren't getting a large swath of people to agree to that, then you are taking away something that most people do not want you to take. Uh, so it's not worth it. Don't be a secessionist. It's not going to work. That's the exact same thing we're seeing with Cal Exit. Um, what you need to do is be supporting the people and the identity that you have created and developed with economics, with you know, of course, property and of course, land to help facilitate your growth. But you shouldn't look at that land as the same as being 100% independent. You should be looking at that land as a way to advance your goals and to create land external from any other country that can be uniquely claimed as yours. But you shouldn't try and take it from others. That is a great way to start a fight. It's stealing. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me... Let me mute it so I can cough loud. Excuse me, everybody. Thank you for that Dance Club remix. Um, Drew says, I love the Southern Roll Tide just at the bottom of the tweet. Yep. Um, Drew said, it's at Beer to Will, I think. Brandon says, of course, which is why I haven't returned to micronational politics since it's not beneficial to anyone. I disagree with that, though. Uh, that's the thing that gets me, Brandon, is you're like, so, and a lot of people do this as well. A lot of people will become micronationalists to start their own country. They realize that people don't want to join their country. So then they go, okay, and I'm not saying that there's any like nation that really deserves it and any that doesn't, because that's also a thing that's just like sometimes luck, you know, but that being the case, if for whatever reason, somebody hasn't found success in the micronational community, they, they either, you know, I've seen people say, you know, the micronational community is toxic, which, yes, there are certain aspects of the micronational community which are super toxic, and it sucks that people are driven away from the community because of that. And as well, they feel like, oh, well, my micronation didn't work, so micronations are pointless, and that's why I haven't, like, gone back to the thing. If your micronation doesn't work, that should be even more reason for you to join and support another one. It's because you're going, hey, I tried and I saw how hard it is to make it work. I need to get I need to find the thing that seems like it has as close to my views as I can find. That seems like it has the most likely chance of success and has the most reasonable, you know, again, most aligned views and support it. Go after it and be like, yeah, yeah, I want to give you guys my support because I think you got this. I, I know we can make good achievements with this. 
Uh, and that's what Eternia's pitch is. It's not that we're trying for some pie-in-the-sky idea. We are trying to make incremental changes every single day that we have laid out in plans to be able to improve the lives of our citizens. We are doing things uh, every uh, every time that we can, whether it's with these live streams to create more interaction with you guys, uh, to you know creating things like our uh, things like on our website to be able to uh, show off our community and what everybody's doing more. Uh, even to the point of, you know, some of our plans like with the money transmitters license where we're investing in things that improve the value of the things that people have already been supporting us with, like our imperial notes. Uh, we have like strategic ways of improving this step by step and proving to people, hey, this is why this should work. So I definitely don't think that like not getting support in your nation or, or in that development should make you like step away from the micronational community in general and be like, well, I don't want to engage in micronational politics. You should. You should just do it for other nations because those nations need it. You know what I mean? Every nation that's out there actively existing as a micronation needs another person to come in and say, hey, this is why they deserve uh, your support. This is why they um, they need uh, you to help them grow. When you were in the micronational community, I'm sure there are plenty of things, even now being not, you know, an active micronationalist, uh, as, as you say, there are still, I'm sure, plenty of things that you see micronations doing and you go, oh, I, I would have done that better. Oh, there would have been some differences if I would have had the chance to, to change things. And for me, that's ultimately what it's about is being able to point that out and saying, OK, so if you really could change things, if you could be so different then show it in, you know, another nation. Give them that advice that they don't have. Give them that support that they need because I, as the leader of Eternia, don't know everything. I know some things, but there are plenty of people who teach me stuff all the time that would be like, hey, if you'd be doing this, the nation would grow faster. If you'd be doing this, you'd be supporting this group of people more. If you'd be doing this, you could get out ahead of this quicker. And I go, oh, oh I didn't think of all those things. Thank you. Thank you, other smart people. I need it. I need that help. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, ooh, so Galania says, uh, that's the same case of Serbia and Kosovo. Kosovo has a reason to secede. They have a different culture where Serbia just wants land. Uh, makes sense. Uh, Barleska says, is it just me or do I have a lot of border disputes? Do you? Uh, that sounds concerning, Barleska. Uh, Brandon says, oh, absolutely. Helping other, the other nations is fine, but being a central authority is just not justifiable. Uh, I'm curious as to what you mean. Um, Gorlania says, how many border disputes? Uh, Gorlania says seven. And then Gor uh, Verleska says seven. Gorlania says, yeah, that's a little bit a lot. Agreed. I feel like if you have seven border disputes, you probably don't have super justifiable border claims. Uh, that's hard. Also, why don't you feel like it's justifiable to be a central authority figure, uh, Brandon? Because, uh, again, like, you know, you don't have to be the leader of the nation to be, like, a central authority figure, and you can still help out a ton of people. You know, a ton of nations need, like, vice whatevers. A ton of nations need, like, senators and people like that, like, representatives, you know, uh, foreign diplomats, stuff like that. Uh, foreign diplomats, diplomats, people to help them out, people to give advice. Athosia says a new year means a new push do not let your belated celebrations get out of the way of our true mission free the Ozarks yeah that's the thing that gets me as well so in situations like this where people have specific land claims and that's what their whole thing is about Cascadia is a similar thing Cascadia I don't think is really continuing too much in any way but uh, Titania Smith who is somebody that I had followed for quite a while uh, who I think I still follow uh who did a lot with uh, with Cascadia. Uh, Cascadia and it seems like Athosia both have very specific land claims. Cascadia is a specific area in the uh, like northwestern United States around Oregon, Washington, all those all those states, Northern California, uh, that uh, you know is a part of this like mountain range and forest area um, <clears throat> that they claim is like unique territory and a unique culture and should be different from the rest of the U.S. Again, they are making this claim not necessarily from historical precedent, but just calling it like a different culture. 
uh, you know, arguing that it should be its own thing, even though there hasn't been a time in history where it is its own thing. Uh, apart from like Native American tribes, but they're not supporting the Native American tribes, uh, you know, developing there. They're supporting specifically a whole new government. Um, the Ozarks is a similar thing. Again, I feel like because they cross so many different state lines, because they're trying to gain land specifically that's already exists in another country and they're trying to take it away and say that's no longer a part of the United States or whatever, I think that's not going to work. I think it's difficult, difficult, difficult. It You have a good claim and you have an interesting one. It's unique, but I think it's difficult, if not impossible, to do that because uh, you, you'd have to get basically the entire United States to support you leaving, and that's a rabbit hole in and of itself. Um, Gildar Heel, uh, Goldar Heel says, what are successful micronations and what makes them successful in your opinion? What are the standards of success for a micronation in your opinion? Ooh, so Gildar Heel, you need to watch, uh, how to micronation the basics. Uh, we straight up have, uh, a video that was going to be called the basics of success, but it was shortened to the basics. Uh, in this animated video, we discuss how to create a micronation and the basics required to ensure success of a new government or nation. It's a video that we have. It's on our channel right here. I'll pull it up for you. You should go. It's an animated video as well. A lot of people enjoy it. It has 338 views right now. Uh, you can actively go and watch that and help us create even more views on it. 48 likes. Uh, I will drop a link to that right now. Uh, I recommend you guys go watch that. That will explain everything you need to know about my opinions on what makes a micronation successful. There's the link right there. Uh, go check that out, Gildar Heel. Brandon says, I mean, being involved with other micronations is fine, working in government, econ, etc., but I rather meant than being your own state when the situation doesn't justify it. It's just counterproductive. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. So I think that's one of the hard things, too, is that you want to feel like, you know, my thing is justified. Like, it's 100% reasonable for me to be doing this uh, and, and creating this country. But at, if at any point it does is no longer justified, you probably shouldn't keep doing it. You know what I mean? Eternia, the reason that Eternia is growing and developing like it is, is because there are still goals and still aspirations that we can reach that benefit our people. If it ever comes to the point where we are just taking money and time and resources from our people and not being able to provide them any benefit from that, any additional you know, support because of that, um, that sucks. Now, there's always going to be people who get give more and get less from our empire or ver vice versa, get more and give less to our empire. Uh, but that's okay. You know, being able to say, hey, a really wealthy person helped out Eternia and gave us a lot of money, which happened fairly recently. We had one of our citizens donate more money than has ever been donated at any one time to Eternia, donated over $400 to us, uh, actually did for donate flat $400 to us. Um, 200 in Imperial notes, 200 is just a, a donation a gift to us that in and of itself is like a huge you know huge change for us that doesn't necessarily benefit that person a ton you know it, it doesn't you know unlock now that doesn't mean that the value of their citizenship is raised like 30 times or whatever but it does mean that everybody else's life in our micronation becomes a little bit better all of the benefits of citizenship of you know our economy and everything go up that little bit because of that person's help uh, so that does improve the situation for them but also everybody else and that's ultimately how we define success a lot of the time and how we push forward with our goals is Hey, are we doing something that will, are, are we using all of these resources in a way that's going to legitimately help to, to make things bigger and better for people? And we have always found it to be the case. Um, uh, Galania says, Barleska, how is Casa Grande invading you? Brandon says, especially if uh, for perhaps the local situation just doesn't justify the need for an independent government. Agreed. A lot of the time people will have for example, micronations that are created out of their hometown, like, you know, it'll be a small town of like 400 people. And they're like, you know, uh, we're, 
uh, we're the Kansas Town Micronation or whatever. I know that's just a, a made up name, but we're we're the Kansas Town Micronation. We're a we're a population of two hundred city, and we you know we started a Micronation. It's me and my friend Doug or whatever. It's like that's cool. Um, what are the what are the reasons that you created your nation? Oh well, we want to uh, support and help uh, other people uh, in the Kansas Town area or whatever. It's like that's great. You probably don't need a country for that. If you want to create a country, that's fine. Nobody can stop you from making a country. Nobody can say that you didn't create a country because you as a micronationalist are the one who gets to determine that. People should accept that from you. That being the case, though, there are better and worse reasons to create one. There are ones that are going to be more and less successful. And also, like you said, their scope may just dictate that. You know, If you're not trying to change the world, if you're not trying to do these big crazy things, you can probably have a legitimate movement that accomplishes the thing that you want and does it far quicker than if you were trying to create a country. If you just make a local political movement to solve local problems, you can probably get that done pretty quick and you will have a surprising effect uh, on your community without dragging this whole other like micronational aspect into it. Uh, ooh, uh, multiple things. Uh, so I, that's a solid take, Brandon. I, I appreciate you for that. Uh, and it, it means a lot to have your input as well. Uh, we always like seeing, you know, uh, experienced micronationalists in the chat uh, spitting facts out here. Galania says, I'm just confused. There isn't a way Casa Grande can assert their claims. Barlesca says, Galania, by using checkpoints or making signs or removing Barlescan flags and the arisen Barlesca, it seems like they're memeing kind of. It seems like they're doing like a little bit of cosplay type stuff. Casa Grande says Casa Grande has a lot of uh, Burlesca says Casa Grande has a lot of land, but still illegally taking land, my land for economy. Galani says I'm probably missing stuff, but how can you assert it back? But how can't you assert it back? Great question. Because he uses some lies to cover, but still covers my voices from telling the truth. Yeah, I feel like this is a little bit of a meme. Um, I want to tell you guys real quick. I appreciate you. Uh, I love you guys. I am gonna probably head out here in a second. Uh, so that I can get ready for bed and start winding down for the day. I have enjoyed this talk, though. Uh, a lot of this was less about the Internet, honestly. Uh, it, well, it was about the Internet, but it was focused on a particular part of the Internet, a particular part of extremism. And, you know, why Micronation should avoid extremism, it seems like, was ultimately what this was about. But I feel like it does tie into, you know... A part of micronations and, and what micronations are on the internet. We are a small group. Uh, we're a fairly fringe group. And we are trying to create nations. We come from all different political and ideological backgrounds. And we are trying to push forward with our goals. That being the case, we have to be very careful. And support each other. And watch each other. And know that even if someone disagrees with your political views or whatever. That you should still have a vested interest as another micronationalist. In making sure that they are not radicalized. And not brought into a uh, state of belief that makes them seem more extreme and makes them take more extreme action. Because as soon as they do, as a micronationalist, when they're branding themselves a micronationalist, that brands your micronation in the same light. So if they do something crazy and extremist, and they get on the news for doing something crazy and extremist, they're going to brand that as a micronation. They're going to say, that's what micronations do. That's what all micronations are. They're all these crazy extreme movements. Which fortunately, there isn't like a well-known case of, and I, I feel so glad about that, but I think it's only because of how fringe micronationalism is. The second that it gets a little too crazy, the second that it gets a little too big, there's going to be somebody who does something crazy and ruins it for a lot of people. So I think we absolutely need to support each other and understand uh, our community really well. We need to talk to each other, we need to have open political dialogue, and we need to have a vested interest in making sure that people aren't radicalized. Brandon says, exactly, 100% agreed. Uh, thanks for the whole explanation. I'm glad we could speak on the idea of micronations and the justification for one. Agreed. It's good to see you, Brandon. Also, if you want to continue talking, hit up our Discord. We're always looking for people to come hang out and educate. Uh, you know, I like talking on there. I like seeing people on there. I don't think you got to see the beginning of the stream, but we were pretty much just hanging out on Discord and talking about the different conversations that are happening on there. Uh, again with everybody, I would still be happy to do a meme review. If you guys want that meme review, hit me up. Throw those memes in the Discord on the meme channel. Throw them 
in my DMs. Tell me, hey, I, I love this meme. This is a fire meme. Throw it in there, and I will. I will hit it up on stream. Uh, Galania says, you too. See ya, and long live attorney and Galania. Thank you. Attorney forever, and go Galania. Uh, Republic of Barleska says, have a good night, and may God bless you. Long live attorney and the Republic of Barleska. Uh, good to see you as well. Uh, attorney forever, and long live Barleska. Very cool. Okay, so yeah, uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out and supporting us. Uh, again, follow us on Twitter if you guys are on Twitter, Instagram, all that. We we have all of these. We have Twitter, Instagram. We also have TikTok. Again, I wanna I wanna throw it out there. We have TikTok. I'm gonna see if I can't log in without you guys seeing my stuff. Oh, you guys are logged in. Oh, awesome. We're already logged in. So. That being the case, here's our profile. We got five followers. Uh, we got uh, 45 likes, three following. Look at our two videos. We got we got some pretty fire views on these two videos. Uh, 859 for our ingots. Beautiful ingots. And 528 for our hydropower. Uh so yeah, if you guys are interested in checking that out, uh, if you guys want more TikToks from us, I would love to do like silly TikTok dances and, and do some stuff that's just more fun for our community on there, especially because it's like such a short form platform. I can, it's a lot easier for me to jump on there if we got like a whole bunch of hype on TikTok for me to like jump on and make like a 10 second video saying, hey, this shit's crazy, hey, and like hyping that up. Versus making like a 10 or 15 or 20 minute video or doing like a four hour live stream like we have tonight. Uh, it's easier for me to do it uh, on TikTok if we get a following. So if you like our TikTok, if you want to see more, please go and follow that. It's Empire of Attorney on TikTok. Uh, and same thing with our Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter is, I think, at Attorney and Empire. And the same thing with Instagram, just Attorney and Empire. Very cool. Uh, everybody said uh, good night. Hey, good night, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for the five viewers. If you haven't yet, I'm going to say it one more time. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Please hit all notifications. Make sure you turn on all those notifications because there's only like 30 or 40% of people, I think, who have notifications turned on actively for us out of the people who watch us. So it helps a ton to get people trafficked into streams like this. Uh, the bigger the streams are, the more watch time we get, the more watch time we get, the closer we can do get to our land purchase as well as all the other you know nice pieces of equipment we want to get and the people that we want to help us with doing all this cool media for you guys so uh, if you're interested in learning more interested in helping us helping us develop purchase something from us join our government join our citizenship help us out there's a ton of ways to get involved and i will see you next time good night everybody good night bye everybody Eternia forever. Peace, guys. Peace. I, I'm doing this because they always say that the live stream ends super early. So, peace, guys. <clears throat> it's just because of a long bit of lag. There's probably like one or two minute lag. Uh, but I appreciate you guys. Peace, everybody. Have a good night. Eternia forever.